Phantomaniacs, welcome to the newest episode of the Needless Things Podcast, where we talk about toys, movies, music, and all manner of pop culture dorkery. I'm your host, Dave, and uh, we're going to make this intro short and sweet because my buddy Ryan needs me, uh, but I am, uh, I'm going to tell you a couple of dumb things uh, before we get into the episode, which is, by the way, our July Needless Commentary, Continuing Needless Summer. We watched and commented on the Andy Sedaris classic Malibu Express. So that's what you have in store for you today. Uh, But first I want to tell you about this stupid little apparatus I've got on my chair. So I I use a headset. I don't use a separate microphone. Uh, I just, I, I... I don't know. I, I'm not comfortable with the idea of a microphone that's picking up like everything in the room. So I've got a headset with a mic attached. It's Turtle Beach. It's great. Uh, this is the second one I've had of this model. I guess technically this is the newer version of the original ones I had, but it's it's even better. It's great. But it has the wire from the headset goes out to this box and then the wire to the computer comes out of this box. And on this little box, it has a uh, volume control for chat and game. And I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not even sure what the game knob does. The The chat, I know what that does. That increases the volume of what I'm hearing in the headset game. You know what? I don't even know. It doesn't matter. I don't game with these. Uh, and then there's a switch for on, mic, and mute. And I just realized... I don't really know what that middle one does, what Mike does. Well, okay, I guess that mutes the mic. So, so anyway, this little box is very inconvenient because it's, it's heavy. It's largish. Uh, it's, it's not as big as a small remote control, but it's big enough to where if it's just flopping around while you're trying to record a show, it's annoying. So I, I made this little apparatus on my chair on the arm of my chair with one of those clear rubber bands that hold action figures in imagine that that i would have any extras of those uh and i have that attached to a bottle opener uh if you remember the hip-hop group the alcoholics that changed their name to the licks this is a the licks bottle opener Uh, I've got several of these from when they played at the Masquerade when I was working there. But anyway, it's this perfect little clip that I can clip that box onto. Well, my rubber band broke earlier, and the the stupid thing fell off. So I had to go find another rubber band that was the right size to go around the arm of the chair. Uh, But I've I've got it fixed. It's situated now. So anyway, that's the dumb thing I had to tell you. The not-dumb thing I had to tell you is San Diego Comic-Con at home or not a con or at Homicon, or whatever people are calling it. I don't know. It's going on this weekend. I would love to be able to have some news for you, but I'm recording this Wednesday because there's so much stuff going on. Well, first of all, I'm in one of my five-day stretches, which means I barely even have the will to exist, let alone do any extracurricular stuff. Uh, But I'm recording my intro Wednesday night because as soon as I'm done with this, I will be doing an episode of the clown is down podcast. I'm very excited to be going on their show. They came on this show a couple of weeks ago and we talked about forgotten toys of yesteryear. I'm going on their show and I don't, I don't know if I can tell you what we're going to talk about because I don't, their schedule is a little different. This, this episode that we're recording tonight may not come out for a couple of months. So I'm just going to say, listen to every episode of clown is down and you'll have your bases covered. It's a great show. I, I genuinely do love it, and I, I honestly 100% have added it to my podcast rotation. It is, it's my number... Well, technically, it's my number two right now because... So my number one is Major Wrestling Figure Podcast. My number two is Clown is Down because they're shorter episodes, and I know I can get them in. And then my number three is My World with Jeff Jarrett, 
Uh, and my number four, no, I take it back. My number three is New Day, and my number four is My World with Jeff Jarrett. And then after that, if I have time for anything else, which I don't, uh, then I, I fit it in there. But that's there, there you go. That's my podcast schedule. So that's another dumb thing that I'm sharing with you right now. Uh, tomorrow morning for me, yesterday for you guys, Mattel, on their Mattel Creations website, put up all of their San Diego Comic-Con exclusives. Excuse me, I've had a long day at work. I need a sip of, unfortunately, just water because I have to be up at 3.30 in the morning. So no no Elijah Craig for me tonight. I, I have to wait four more days before I get any sweet, sweet Elijah. Um, so Sergeant Slaughter, this incredible Sergeant Slaughter figure, uh, my personal favorite, like, yeah, Slim Jim, uh, Macho Man was great. Mr. T was great. But this, first of all, Sergeant Slaughter, one of my favorite wrestlers, one of my favorite characters of all time. Absolutely love him. Uh, and this is an LJN-style Sergeant Slaughter WWE Ultimate figure by Mattel. Y- you can Google it. You can see what it looks like. I'm very, very concerned about being able to get this thing. A limit of two per customer on Mattel's Mattel Creations website, which my only experience with this website is that things I have tried to buy have sold out in seconds. Seconds. I really wish this was Entertainment Earth again because I had no trouble getting Macho Man or T. Uh, Not excited about tomorrow. And I'm going to be at work trying to do this. So the stress level is very high in the toy stress world. Uh, and then I would like to get one of the Masters of the Universe Revelation Scare Glow figures, even though uh, I'm not really a big fan of the line so far. And you can see my reviews of Skelegod and Skeletor on the Needless Things YouTube channel, in addition to plenty of other reviews, including this week, uh, Ske- the Revelation Skeletor went up and the Masters of the Universe Origins Wind Raider went up, which is a phenomenal toy. And quite frankly, I think everybody should own it. Uh, Skeletor. Maybe less so. But I want this Scare Glow just because I love Scare Glow. I love Glow in the Dark Toys. It looks great. I, I just want to own this. But I am uh, I passed on Moss Man. I passed on He-Man. Uh, I haven't seen Evil Lynn yet, but I, I can't imagine she's going to... I've seen the pictures, and there's nothing compelling to me there. Uh, although, once I watch the show, which drops today, by the way, uh, I might be more into these, but the soft plastic and the tiny heads and He-Man just looks like a goofball. Uh, from the neck down, he's great, but that head is just terrible. Uh, so anyway, I, I am a bundle of nerves in anticipation of tomorrow's Mattel on sale. I don't think there's anything else from Mattel that I want. There's like an Alan Grant, I think, that doesn't look all that great to me. Uh, but this Sarge, uh, I want several and you can order limit is two if i can get two i will be very very happy uh but i I would like to have one mint on card one to open one to get signed by sarge uh one to put on my gi joe shelf and then maybe the chase variant on a black card yeah there there's a variant of a freaking comic-con exclusive it's it's madness so anyway that's what's going on in my life uh, what else is there to cover? I don't, I don't know that I've really got much else this week. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the last thing, the big thing that I had to discuss. So last week's episode, you may have noticed, uh, that there wasn't an episode one week. Uh, so wait, I'm trying to think. So two weeks ago was audible interlude dropped on Monday. That Friday, there was no needless things. And then last Friday, you did get an episode of Needless Things, and the reason for that is I have discovered that the problem with doing four Needless Things and one Audible interlude per month was not, in fact, that we couldn't get together live and in person. It's that for five days in a row, twice a month, I just don't even want to exist. I have... No will you know, five twelve hour days in a row at the job that I do is brutal, uh, and l- basically losing those five days in a chunk just takes away so much of my motivation, so much of my time. I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna uh, sit here and say, oh, I'm just too busy. It's just that for five days, uh, ten total days out of my month, I just 
really can't get anything done because I get up at 3.30 in the morning, I get home at 6.30 at night, uh, and I've got to get up and do it again for four more days after the first one. And it's uh, it's brutal. So for the foreseeable future, basically, uh, you know, before it was once we can get back together, now it's until my work schedule goes back to normal, which I, I hope will be September, but it may not be till January. So for the foreseeable future, we are back to three Needless Things episodes uh, a month and one Audible interlude, which will be the first Friday of every month and, and still in its own feed, still doing its own thing. Uh, so, and, and well, and it, you know, some months have five weeks, but Audible interlude will be the first podcast available from Needless Things every month. And then until the first of the next month, you'll get Needless Things episodes, if that makes sense to you. Because uh, things are not back to normal yet. I am not ready for a full workload yet. And we're working on stuff for Dragon Con now. I've got to put those panels together. Sunday, we just had our first live in-person meeting for the game show, and it went awesome. It's going to be such a good time. Saturday night. 10 p.m. I don't know if I can tell you the location yet, but I can tell you if you know where the game show has been in the past, you probably have a pretty good idea of where it's going to be this year. I am looking for a couple more volunteers. If you're interested in helping with the game show and you're going to be at Dragon Con, uh, shoot me a message on Facebook or uh, tweet Needless Things podcast or, or whatever. You, you know how to use social media. Uh, hit me up. Send me a message, uh, phantom troublemaker at gmail.com. You can contact me there if you are serious about making this magical, unique, special thing come to life. I could use a couple more volunteers. And I'll tell you this right now it's you, you show up uh, an hour ish before showtime, help us set up, and then I give you liquor. That's it. That's it. Uh, you know, there may be a couple of things during the show, but for the most part, uh, you just hang out and watch the show. Uh, it, it, it is an easy, easy job and a fun time to be had. So there's that. Uh, you guys, speaking of a fun time to be had, I think we need to get on with this commentary. Andy Sedaris is a Hollywood legend. He is a Needless Things legend. We love him around here, so we sat down and we watched Malibu Express. So grab your copy, throw it in your movie-playing machine, and get all the booze you can handle because you're going to need it for this one. Uh, please enjoy Malibu Express. <laughs> I need another drink. I mean, <laughs> and, and what better way to start our commentary here? Uh, another needless summer. And we're celebrating with the fine Andy Sedaris film Malibu Express by Malibu Bay Films. Yes. To, uh, so we just watched it through it. once, and uh, we're we're still here. And what happened in this movie? I'm not here. <laughs> No idea. Right. We've got a special guest. We do. We do. Welcome to the to, to Cadaver Manor. We're, we're we're on location. Yes, we are on location at Cadaver Manor. Uh, joining us, Beth Van Dusen. How are you doing? I'd be better if I felt like this were a, a treat for me to join you for the first time. <laughs> do you feel like you did something wrong and you're being punished and yeah, that's why you're here? I thought you guys liked me a little bit. <laughs> But well, I don't feel that anymore. We'll we'll do another one. Yeah, we'll, we'll, like, we'll, we'll bring have, you back we'll for Samurai back. Cop, <laughs> or uh, or uh, Miami Connection, or uh, you know Kung Fu Hustle, maybe. Ooh, that's for, a good movie. That's for, actually a good movie. Yeah. yeah. For the listeners, we're watching Malibu Express, so please uh, grab your. Uh, I'm I'm certain all of you have a Blu-ray copy like what we're watching. 
And if you don't, you can get one for nine dollars. That's yes. right, Amazon Prime. Uh, and like you'll get it expensive. tomorrow, <laughs> or maybe put it in your DVD or your VHS, whatever you have. But uh, I paid watch like long. twelve dollars no. for like thirteen of his movies. Huh? Yeah, yes. yeah. You yes. can also buy a. Uh, uh, Guns, Guns, girls, girls and, and G-string. yeah, for like G-string. I think yeah. it's I think it's like six or seven bucks now. Yeah, and it's got like twenty nine movies. It's crazy. It's not it's everything. The, it's but the it's, entire. It's, what you it's need. most of the Sedaris verse. Well, Ryan, why don't you hit play and we'll uh, start talking about this movie? Hell yeah. Uh huh. Wrong, wrong button. No play. I, I I'm aware. You're, I know you're not familiar with this uh, device. <laughs> it's a PS Five. It's really fancy. <laughs> I thought you would just tell it to, to PS5 play. No, I yeah, I know, right? Uh, this is why I got a PS5 so I could watch this movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, as, as this movie starts, like weird country music is playing, and some chick is typing on like a circa like '82 Tandy. <laughs> this is going to come back into play though in the story. So it's really it, necessary. Like everything is it very does, well constructed. It does not. And connected. Yeah. The yeah. the music the is so sense. weird because they're they're obviously trying to establish that the main character is sort of a country boy. Yeah. yeah. But he isn't Cody at all. He's not. No. Yeah. Uh, but the whole score is Ryan. Your your description was perfect. <laughs> I don't remember what the fuck I said. <laughs> <laughs> Frontierland. Oh yeah, World. yeah, yeah. It's like Frontierland or like Dolly World. Or like uh, the like Dolly World, what Dollywood? <laughs> <Dolly World. laughs> you know everybody's favorite place. <laughs> like, <laughs> we're all much better for having it, watched it. Yeah, it, the it country sounds like yeah, yeah, it sounds like theme park uh, mood music. Yeah, it does. Like atmosphere it's, music or whatever. Yeah, like, even like Six Flags when you go to the Western area. Yeah, like that's what it's. But like. it's completely inappropriate to this movie, which takes place in Beverly Hills. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, yeah. Palm, Palm Springs and Malibu. I, do we see those places? Are we sure we're really there? Well, we're not that's sure. Where, at all that's where, where Andy Sedaris's center of operations was. Yeah. So, like, it's not like he said, "I got a great idea for a film that's going to take place in Palm Springs." It's like Palm Springs is over there. We're going to shoot today. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, so. You know, there's a there's a lot of movies in this universe. Hard to get to why is one that we have covered. Uh, the Sedaris verse. Yeah, which I stand by is a fucking fantastic movie. Yes, and has connections to this movie, but this one was before it, and uh, it's interesting. So we were talking. You were talking about Cody Abilene a minute ago. Yeah, I really feel like Sedaris was trying to do a. Um, this is uh, Robert Downey Jr. This is his Iron Man. No, like, to me, I feel like this was supposed to be Burt Reynolds. Like, Cody Abilene is supposed to be, like, Burt Reynolds, Smokey and the Bandit. That, like, kind of cowboy, tough guy, real sexy, all the women want to fuck him kind of dudes. Yeah. So I I think that's what he was going for, but he was going for, like, a tongue-in-cheek Burt Reynolds, but it just comes out, like... So, if you watched Hard to Get to Hawaii, Rowdy Abilene is his, <laughs> his brother that is in that movie. And that is the guy who was the singer of that song, Baby Come Back. You can Oh yeah, yeah. Up. Yeah, that guy. Yep. Really? Yep. Super I, I weird, get right? like big Magnum PI vibes on mm-hmm. Cody Abilene. Well I mean in the eighties the yeah. the handsome mustache lead was was definitely a thing. Yeah. And he nails the look. It's just the character doesn't yeah. give a, I think his acting is actually he's probably like the best actor in the movie but that's it's just really not, a, not a big stretch I agree <laughs> I agree but like there's just not he doesn't do a lot I don't know the guy who plays Stewart's pretty good mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. and that's the thing I think is that Cody is completely extraneous to this movie he does not need to be in this movie well who else is gonna fuck all those women other sure. than to fuck all those women yeah. he is he is the um, catalyst for all the tits that we see in this movie. Which, that's like, true. Let, yes. Let's be real. But that's, isn't that that's kind the of real awesome? reason for this movie? Well, yeah. sure. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. the point of the movie. As, as Andy Sedaris likes, like the first thing out of his mouth is there's four playmates in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> this, this movie is literally just like some random sewn together action scenes and then women taking their tits out and screaming and begging for Cody to fuck so, them. Sometimes for please, no please reason, fuck me. Their, their tits <laughs> Yeah. Out. 
you know. Well, I mean, there's always a reason. Well, there's a reason. But, like, the but, phone rang. The phone rang, so right. you've got to take your tits well, out. but Cody was on the phone. Cody, Cody <laughs> wait, why does this guy have a shoe hat? Shoe hat! It pisses me off. He's got a shoe visor. But also, it's like... The I man like, has laces well, on his hat. And what's the point the, of the, the visor? Because he's got a giant bald spot back me. here that you'd think he would want to protect yeah. from the sun. The greatest unsolved mystery to me is why the hot photographer chick doesn't take her boobies out. She's the only hot chick in this movie that doesn't take her tits out. Maybe she's Andy Sedaris' daughter. That actually, and titties. Actually, do we ever see the maid's tits? How I don't know if she did. No, no. So. no. It was That's hard, be, though. She's got that pelt of hair. You mean yeah. Marion the maid? Yes. yes. Yeah. Maid Marion? Maid Marion. Um, June Knocker is a huge fan of her with an H. So right here in the opening of the movie, we've established that he's kind of uh, a little bit of a comedy bit because he's, he's, he's a terrible he's shot. Like yeah. Boy Supreme. And they've That's covered up they've covered up for his uh, modest acting ability by saying you're bullshit at showing emotions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they establish right out of the gate. Let's let's keep our expectations down here. Yeah. Also they with these butt cheeks. Those are butt cheeks. And no woman in this entire movie wears a bra. It doesn't matter if she's driving a race car, if she's running um, doing calisthenics. Women can do it all without a bra. Yeah, not that seems one bra. Super like progressive. I no. It, just, it seems like there would be some hurt knockers in this movie. If if hurt anybody, knockers is uh, her brother. Sequel <laughs> to this. Wasn't hurt that, knockers. Wasn't that a movie? The hurt knockers. Yes. Yeah, it was. Yeah, the one like some Oscars. Right? It had Jeremy Renner in it from Hawkeye. <laughs> yeah. That's Jeremy Reamer. I, yeah. I like this. I like that we're establishing him with his Agent Dale Cooper tape recorder, though. Yeah. That's supposed yeah. to explain things, but absolutely explains nothing. The only thing it well, explains like, what we can clearly see. This I was driving my car today. This movie is completely inexplicable because, like, you don't. Like, there's no point in trying to understand things. You just experience it. Yeah. True. Like this whole business with the. The door in the back of the train. It's a lot like mushrooms that way. You don't, <laughs> yes. you don't try and understand it. You just, you're just along for the ride. The, well, there's several moments that I'm like, are they on mushrooms? Or am I on mushrooms? I'm not sure. I mean, so I don't I didn't. I We're watching this right now, and I barely remembered this scene that we saw an hour and Because ago. it gives you some sort of rolling amnesia as you watch this movie. So as you watch the movie, you forget everything that happened before 30 minutes ago. But like, if that you don't really get mad about sense. it because you just wait another five minutes and you see more boots. Yeah. The yeah. only problem is you are aware of the passage of time. Yeah. Yes. If it could somehow make it so you forget everything as the movie's going on and forget that you've been watching it for an hour and 40 minutes. Like, listen, this is not a good movie, but this is way better than the Danzig movie. Yes. It, yes. It's, yes. It's, Absolutely. Uh, but everything also is better, better than Kroll. Yeah. 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 Better than Kroll. Uh, it's better than Power Rangers. It's better than Power Rangers. Mm. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. yeah. The Power this Rangers. Is, the fucking goo there guy. Were, there were zero that was boobs so yeah. in Power Rangers. This movie yeah, is, but that, this movie's fun. It has action. It has titties. It makes zero fucking sense. This but, movie has a bunch of chicks whose boobs I don't particularly want to see. But the Power Rangers movie had a chick whose boobs I really wanted to yeah, see. Yeah, I wanted to, yeah. But you don't. True. Which I guess is worse. So you're right, this is a better movie. Yeah. yeah. I'm also noticing that he spends a lot of time in this movie talking about his father, his, I mean, I'm sorry, his daddy. Ooh! There's a daddy. Daddy. Look, man there's, there's some man yeah. ass. He talks about his well, the dad Calvin's constantly, ass. and you <laughs> we don't meet his father. I, I, that's a good so does his I hope that's a matter? cigarette lighter and it's a water gun. That's pretty good. Pretty funny. And these are just two may, may, random may. bitches that walked into his boat and were like, "I feel like we want you to have sex." I feel like these are two of the four planmates. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah they are because he pointed at them. Yeah, for sure. Um, this is uh, this is what happens when you have a yacht. Yeah, random <laughs> women just show up for for uh, like the afternoon fact, like, delight. I know I'm a failure in life. Because I don't have a yacht, and this shit doesn't happen. <coughs> yeah, nobody's showing up to your apartment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like the reason you don't have a yacht right. is because you don't have a mustache. Oh, those, I mean, those I things could fit, be connected. I can go home and fix that shit. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I feel like that would just work itself out. That'd be a good plan. Yeah. 
Uh, so, so this is where the Russians come in the play? She's place? dressed up like the chick from V. Yep, yeah. Um, so the Russians so, are a very popular plot point for bad guys. Wait they're a minute. They're by five years. Because they are, no, they're behind, aren't oh, they? Oh yeah, they are, they're, but they're going to catch up. They're, they're five years behind us in computer knowledge. Yes, they're stealing our stuff right out for Mondays. Yeah. You gotta watch it, out for your they're stuff. They're bad at computering, but they're good at stealing. Yes. So, and I didn't realize this Classic scene foreigners. gives away the twist ending. Because this is her talking to the government agency guy. And he's giving her an assignment. So this this actually gives away the twist ending, doesn't it? Where she's saying that she's a government agent. I don't remember the ending, so... <laughs> the big, basically, we watched it five minutes ago. I was trying to make sense out of this shit. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm here for the titties and the mustache. So, uh, <laughs> and the and the red uh, DeLorean. Yeah, 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 yeah so weird. And it'll weird. be gone soon. You know so what, though? I agree it. it's not right, but I kind of like it. It's oh, it's cool. kick ass. It's cool. Be wrong. I mean, I understand why the DeLorean's red, because red cars go faster. That's just scientific fact. It, it is. Science, it it yeah. is aesthetically displeasing. It's weird. It's just weird to see a DeLorean that isn't the DeLorean from Back to the Future. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, in my mind, DeLoreans only exist in Back to the Future. Yeah. I don't understand. Well, we just saw Co- him. We just saw Cody Abilene. He's referring to Cody Abilene. Why do we have to cut to Cody Abilene to remind us who he is? Because there's tits. Well, the, yeah, and that's that goes back to the amnesia thing of this movie. Like it's so weird. You. Sedaris knows what he's doing. Yeah, yeah so he's like, here, like, he? this is the guy you met two seconds they ago. They keep reintroducing yeah. Cody for like the first 45 minutes of the movie. He's like, oh, hi, I'm Cody Abilene. Like, he keeps reintroducing himself like, to the audience. It's a lot like Roadhouse where they're like talking about Dalton. They're like, oh, you know Dalton. Like, have you heard of Dalton? Dalton yeah. Dalton, Dalton, Dalton. Yeah, yeah. It's the same thing. So, the. Pain, pain the, don't hurt. Even though there are titties on the screen right now, I do want to say <laughs> one more thing about the Red DeLorean. My problem with it being red is that brush stainless steel that we're used to from Back to the Future, yeah, yeah. it looks like a badass car, but red, it looks like it's just like a little Pontiac or something. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't Like look it nearly makes it cool. look cheap and not special. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Also, I do want to talk about the fact that this one girl has really small nipples, um, and it's just. Hey, just listen, Nicole, like even particularly Nicole, small for like all, all nipples. All nipples are valid, okay? Yeah, that's true. All what nipples is, deserve we're not love. Here to cancel what is that nipples. thing? What is that pager? It's his like, it's like yeah, it's like a pager type pager. thing, but it didn't have like English on it. It just it's, had like red dots. It's, it's a Russian pager. Oh, okay. More, it's because five years because behind. They're five years behind. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I get it now. Cricket's chirp. But I thought what has come out. Yeah, that's what I was getting ready to ask. What year is it? What dimension did this come out in? Oh, yeah, let's see. 85? 85. 85. Really? So, same year as Back to the Future. Yeah. Really? Wow. That's sad. (laughs) (laughs) I don't even know what to to think. I don't know what to think about anything. A massive drop in quality from Back to the Future. (laughs) (laughs) Imagine going to the movie theater and watching Back to the Future one week. Yeah. And then they go on and see this, and you're like, huh. Uh, I guess I'll just kill myself. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, so the, the dress fuck? the dress that she comes out in, in a yeah. is a uh, gift. And he him. just introduced himself to her. So, I just met you. Will you please put on the sluttiest dress ever? It is remarkable. It's all shoulders and no tits. She changed in two seconds. Yeah, that was like and some I, Nikki gun. Time is malleable in this film, yeah. but I also feel like it would take a minute to get in that dress because it's like it's all like neck and shoulders, but no tit, and then like waist. It, it's, it's almost like a vampirella. There's also yeah. Yeah. Thing going also on. I feel like she taped that dress to her tits. Absolutely, she had, she had to. Yeah, physics would not allow her tits to to stay where they're at. There's a and lot. now and what happened? What just happened? She's put on a different outfit. And now they now she's naked and they're fucking. Yeah. So, well, but Cody they were Abilene. in the middle of dinner. They, yeah, it's Cody yeah, there Cody was Abilene. no transition. It was like, we're eating dinner, and now she's blowing it. Do we, think, doesn't need a transition. do we think Cody Abilene is a time lord <laughs> does yes. actually need a TARDIS? His dick, <laughs> his dick is travels a through time and space. <laughs> oh, oh, so they can just... Yes. At that point, 
Cody Abilene needs water immediately after sex. Well, he blows like 12 loads a day, yeah. so he has to He's stay hydrated. That's dehydrated. how he time travels. He blows a load and travels in time. <laughs> All right. So his pants are bigger on the inside <laughs> Yes, his massive dick. That is correct. All right. Got That's it. the point I was trying to yeah, make. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that would explain all the weird time jumps and like how I like that in a woman. Night. You know what I like more in a woman? My, My penis. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in love with the girl on the centerfold. An original song written for this movie. And it's amazing that it did not make it into the top forty. Shocking. Of 1985. Also, yeah. he's trying to Look. go to work, and these women are like, "Can you fuck us? We're fishing." And he's yeah. like, "I can't." You've got what are we supposed power to do of with love that over here. Yep. And then you've got. Country girl centerfold song over yep. here. How do these things not play on the same radio station all yeah. the time? One's clearly in, inferior. Yeah. Oh, so he's the doing his voice. Oh shit! Okay. And we're about to come to oh, this, part this, of the movie. this this fucking plot point. Cut, I don't, cut this fucking shit. What yeah, is it, this? It is this. pointless. It, it's horrible. And these so people this are the shits and the guy, the dad and the son look like they're the same age. Yeah. I, I guarantee you, like, Bo -bo what, how this happened is that, like, Andy Sedaris was doing some cocaine. He's like, I worry <laughs> we don't have enough comedy in the movie. Yeah. We need to give the people something to laugh at. So what if we throw in some, like, rednecks that he has to race? Because his dad ain't Because his dad. dad. These, yeah. these fucking awful people take up probably half an hour of this movie in total. If you could it's cut them like out. Minutes. No, it's, dude, it, okay, it's not half an hour. No, it's, it's, it's a lot. It's though. way closer to six minutes. I actually appreciate the, the um, subtitles being on because I might be able to understand what they're saying this time around. Uh, this scene alone come. has already been yeah. on for 22 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And there's three scenes with these people. Yeah, this this is this is an hour and forty three minutes of this movie, and they need to fucking cut it. It's, this movie it's is worse. like slightly over two hours long, and half of it is tits. I'm so gonna incorrect. And the no, other half is the hour and thirty nine minutes. Thirty nine minutes. <laughs> it feels a little long. But this part of it is two hours. I think we yeah. need to tweet. Tweet Andy Sedaris that we want the Buffington free cut. I think he's, he's super dead. dead well, we somebody will do it. it. Yeah. But so, I, it's like somebody like knows has got to have a Ouija. Like there's a Ouija board right there. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Shit down let's, there. Let's tell him. Yeah, it's like Sedaris was like, I don't think this movie is ridiculous enough. We need like Mimi from Drew Carey, and and Even that wasn't a thing yet. It's okay. <laughs> Travel. Yeah. This movie's about time I'm travel. I'm disappointed they that that fucking idiot didn't drink the turbo potion yeah, or whatever yeah, it was. The, yeah, yeah, the dry ice. ice. That would be awesome if he drank it, then he ran really fast. <laughs> and, and then he spoke. Because he said he like, like, blows up, so he yeah. blows up, then we don't have to see him again. Yeah, there'd be some super would, fast would, banjo yeah. music oh, while he was Solve the problem. Yeah. This is establishing that they only were able to rent the DeLorean for two hours. Right. Kirk Abilene yeah. looks a lot like Alan Jackson. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. Holy shit. He really does. Get that man on a jet ski. Yeah. Get down, y'all. Or put him in a Ford. Yep. Because that's his car. Well, not even for the rest of the movie. No, he switches the cars the whole rest he's, of the movie. He's not as cool as Kenny Powers. He didn't get a fucking jet ski. Yeah. Nobody's as cool as Kenny Powers. Sure. <laughs> Goddamn right. Ugh. Did you hear that the guy from uh, that directed Eastbound Down is directing the John Cena Peacemaker show? <laughs> that is the most bizarre the, the, thing. Like the whole show. thing? Yeah. Like, well, it's it's James Gunn and him, Jody Hill. Well, Jody I, Hill did the Halloween. Did yeah. The last Halloween. Yeah. So, I mean, he's, he's done other shit. No, I'm just saying that's fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's because, great. like, uh, apparently James Gunn came out and was like, he was like, yeah, I wanted the humor to be like, he's found it down, so I hired the guy. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that's fucking awesome. It's going to be incredible. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, so, why, are, Ryan, this was your pick. <laughs> why? Why don't you tell us a little why? bit about why we're watching why? this movie? About why you hate us. All right, so, here's the thing. Hard Ticket to Hawaii is my favorite Sedaris movie. And it's a phenomenal movie. Yeah, it's and that we movie. watched three years ago now, I think? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So this movie, uh, me and the cast and creature guys, uh, went for, for a weekend to record our album, Return to Wolf Time. 
and uh, we were like, we should bring some movies. And I brought like Evil Dead Two, and I brought like uh, just like a couple like cabiny movies. Why would you watch Evil Dead Two when you could watch Malibu Express? Exactly. <laughs> And then I brought Malibu Express, and then, like, for some reason, that just ended up being the one that was, like, in the fucking DVD player. Because all we have is a DVD player and a TV, and then, like, the computer that the recording guy brought, and we just recorded. So we were either upstairs recording or downstairs watching this movie, and that's, like, all we do. So, like, if you weren't recording, you would sit downstairs and watch Malibu Express. And this was, like, three days of that. And, and like, and I would imagine three days of being like consistently drunk. Oh yeah, we were all fucked up. I can't ima- I don't see substances. how that album ended up being so incredible. Yeah, because of this movie, <laughs> that does not make any sense. I, I, it does. I feel like we do need to talk about. So we've now met Shane, the other cocksmith of this movie. <laughs> so for everybody that Cody Abilene does not fuck, Shane does fuck, yes. and that includes. A woman and her husband. Yes. And her cousin. Yeah. And, I I don't know, everybody. I can't keep track of where all the dicks in this movie go. Yeah. We actually have... I I, I feel like Charlie on It's Always Sunny, (laughs) which is... We need some red yarn. There's too many dicks on the dance floor. (laughs) (laughs) Basically, long story short, uh, this movie's... Super special to all of us because, like, we all have memories. Special, yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm not saying it's good. I'm saying it's special. Like, sure. It's a, we have memories attached to this movie. Gotcha. And if you guys watch the Phantom Zone video, it's the movie that the guys are watching in the beginning of the video. That Phantom Troublemaker ruins and pisses us off. And actually, you guys were watching it in this very living room. You, yes. you fuckers should have flown out to space and brought me presents. Yeah, for interrupting this fucking movie. You should have been like, Phantom Troublemaker, thank you so much for getting us to stop watching that piece of shit Malibu Express. This is a really short movie. (laughs) No, it's... Look... It's fun. It is. It's way worse. It's 80s schlock. Yeah, yeah. We've watched way Oh, for sure. I will say, I would rather watch Malibu Express than Beach Party Bingo that we watched last month. Actually, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm be consistent. With oh, it. I'm gosh. sorry. I'm, it's the truth. Oh. It's the truth. Back to the beach, but whatever. Frankie, Frankie. I'm sorry, I can't remember. It's Frankie. Frankie is it. <laughs> that is actually a beach movie. Yeah. Beach party, so beach, bl- beach blanket bingo. You're saying <laughs> that's an actual this is movie. better than Back to the Beach. Uh, All three I of them are saying it. that. Okay. I yeah. prefer it. I'm not saying I'm that. not saying better. I'm, I'm saying, just saying I prefer okay. it. I'm saying, like, if you ask me which one I would rather watch, it would be this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I'm a terrible person and this has a lot of tits in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure. I'm, but I'm, I, I do love the absolute... Oof. But this doesn't have to be Fucking with bonkers and ridiculousness of this movie. <laughs> and, like, only half of Beach Blanket... Bar fight I was want ridiculous, that machine is. and this one, the entire thing is ridiculous. And what the fuck is that? Thing? Is he drinking a beer while he's working out? No, Probably. It's so badass. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is like him calling out the random women. Uh, I do like sexy Peggy. I'm sexy like, Peggy looks like, like she would fuck you hard. Yeah. <laughs> Pe- it's like angry. Well, like Peggy, she pegs. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's in the name. Yeah. yeah. Peggy's aggressively gonna come at you. Also, I think Peggy's wearing the same outfit and he meets her like several days later. Several days later, yes. Also, Cody Avalon's drinking a Pepsi, which is really weird to be working out and drinking a Pepsi, but. It was was the 80s, it was a different time. He only hydrates with water when he's banging. So, those are the the same bad guys from the end of the movie. Yeah. This is the one that and now okay. She, no, no. This woman is on mushrooms. Okay, but this is a different. This is a different woman because remember when the woman he calls is not her. Now, this, this is, is the, the one, one that, he, that was banged. fucking Shane. Yes, but like, why is she rolling around on the ground but, with her tits but out? That woman was wearing in the that bathroom. Outfit, right? Because yeah. this is yes, the they're sharing clothes. Okay, there was no point to that. She was just writhing around on the ground with her tits out. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's an Amy Sedaris movie. Oh. So he set his camera down. With a big giant '80s flash on top of it, mm-hmm. and, and in theory, right now it's taking pictures it, it, automatically we are of him of him attempting to rape her. We yes. are witnessing a sexual assault. Yes. Yeah, it's real uncomfortable. Yeah, what's happening? It's not fun. 
Well, let's let's Ryan, all remember. Ryan's right? dropping shit out of the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, folks. Let's all remember. There's only a couple letters difference between struggle and snuggle. Well, they're having a shower struggle right now. <laughs> but at least, I guess at least he's raping her in the shower, so then she, you know she can like just sort of like have her cry in there and have her like that's her your memory already, scene afterwards. You're gonna go to the shower and cry, so <laughs> why not just? Handle it all in one spot. Because it's so awkward the way he just leaves her in a corner on the floor in the shower. Yeah, oh, and so why the doesn't just she went notice off. the went fucking flash going because on? Because he's sexing her so good. <laughs> she thought that flash came from inside of her head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just leaves her sitting on the floor of the shower, unsatisfied. And he's like, I mean, I've had enough. Like, it's it's per- well, they're trying to get him over as a piece of shit. They're establishing his uh, yeah, heel, it worked. His heel bone vibes <laughs> in the language of wrestling. Yeah. Like, and, and he... He just raped a woman in the shower and then, like, left her sitting on the floor. And by the way, I took a picture of it. Yeah. So wait. Is that her husband? No, wait. No, that's, that's her, her husband. husband. Yeah. No, but he likes to also fuck Shane. So okay. he's spying because he fucks Shane as well. Well, Shane fucks him. Well, yeah. yeah. Yes. So she's the one that was writing around on the ground. Yes. yes. Yeah. She's the one but on the But we shows. don't know why. No. No idea. We'll never she's, find out. This is the one from the shower right here. And this the is Cody doing Abilene the crossword puzzle. In a, a speedo. Also, yeah. like, why is he living Just with these people? Donging it up. Why is he here at all? There is because no reason. Because the woman reason. in the wheelchair suspects Shane of doing something weird. I think. And I she think invited so. Cody over yeah. to also do weird things. Yes. Yeah. yeah. To also like bang people. <laughs> we can't have just one person in this house doing weird shit. Yeah. We have to have a mustachioed man banging people. We have to have multiple cocksmiths in the house. There are so many vaginas. It really is fuckboy island. Yeah. And then this weird maid Darian. With her <laughs> weird face. Somehow hair. we never see her tits. Uh, but I don't understand what the point of Maid Marian is. No, she's, she's the Russian agent. I don't know. Well, she's there to be another person who might be the one that killed the yeah. guy at the end. It's like Clue. So killed she's Shane. like a red hair. It's just like Clue. It's just like Clue. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a little smarter. <laughs> no. 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 Not at all. No. Um. Oh, but yeah. Shame. So her ticket to Hawaii is legitimately like an action-packed, fun to watch. Yeah, there's explosions, movie. There's like people getting shot. I, I feel like that came out after this, right? Yeah, yeah. I feel like he learned a lot as a filmmaker because there. I know for a fact because there's a poster for this movie in the background of a scene from Hawaii. Of course, Russia there is. Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. Uh. But yeah, I, I, I want to say like 89. I think it's 89 yeah. because I, I remember thinking, wow, this came out the same year as Batman. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Our ticket to Hawaii was 87. 87? Yeah. Really? So it was like a couple of years after this. Okay. Wow. However. Which one came out? made a lot of movies then? like at the same time. 89 may have been Savage Beach or Return to Savage Beach. No, that was 90 something. Okay. Because it was pre-Buff Bagwell. Like, I don't think he was Buff Bagwell yet, but I do think he was Marcus Alexander Bagwell. Okay. I think. That's his jacket with his badass sleeves that rip off. I had a jacket like that. Uh, I did not have a mustache like that because I was like 12. Yeah. But uh, I, I did have a jacket like that that the se- sleeves zipped out. Now he turned into a vest. Well, his just, like, sort of slide off. Well, his looks like he just pulls them off. Yeah. yeah. Of all the pointless, redundant shit that they focus on in this movie, they can't give us a shot of him removing the sleeves from that jacket. Yeah. Like, I want to... The one thing I really want to yeah. see. Yeah. True. They were like, that's not important. Turns out... It is. It's way more important than Shane shuffling me to Shane. You're right. <laughs> Why is he doing this? I don't know. I don't know. It never. I don't think it. it ever pays off. Why does anything ever happen? Shane, and, Shane is an enigma that you cannot pin I, down. I also have a jacket like that. I, that. Now, currently, I have a jacket like the one Shane I've wore. never met yeah, anyone cool named Shane, Shane that I like. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. that. 
What about Shane Warren? Uh, I w- oh, yeah, you're right. I like Shane Warren. You're right. Just because you said that, I won't rape you in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank God. <laughs> but I do know that you'll be in there crying anyway. <laughs> uh, We're all going to need a good shower cry after this. <laughs> right. yeah. I don't know. I'll say Shane was my favorite character in Walking Dead before I stopped watching it. I'm, I'm taking a full-on Silkwood shower when I get home. <laughs> <laughs> It's going gonna, it's gonna to be like a, the scene from uh, Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. Yeah, with the Figure. plunger on the face. Finkel <laughs> is Einhorn. Yeah. Finkel is Einhorn. The crying game. This guy looks like, uh, what's his name in AEW? Um, who's Taz's powerhouse hot? Powerhouse hot. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, why are we supposed to be so okay with all of these men just, like, completely groping, this poor groping woman. women that they don't know for no reason and at all? She is looking at investing in this company. Yes. These meatheads come in and start groping her, and yeah. she's like, no, I'm going to stick around. I'm interested in doing business with these guys. <laughs> yeah. Why? Why are you here? Because this, this is guy's a wealthy got a Star investor. Trek well, because yeah. 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 this was the 80s, and, like, I guess you just assume... A little non-consensual sex in all your business dealings, if you're a woman. Yeah, uh, I, mean, I think also, honestly, like, yeah. <laughs> I think we're supposed to like suspect her a little bit because, like, she's clearly the one that you're supposed to think is bad. And how fucked up is that? That because she's okay with these guys manhandling her, we're like, well, she must be kind of a bad guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, that's right. awful. Yeah. yeah, I feel like a terrible person. Actually, for that. by the time we get to where it's suspected that she's the killer, I'd forgotten all. Oh yeah, me that. too. It's only because it's come back around <laughs> here. Really gives me yeah. amnesia. It it does because like I've watched this like tons of times, but like when we started watching, I was like, I don't remember this. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, I, like, I've had like four or five of these seltzers, and I feel like, am, did, am I drunk? <laughs> <laughs> or am I in hell? <laughs> also, so, all right, tell us about this guy, the beard guy. He is from Police Academy two and three. He's the the dickhead sergeant or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah Mauser. Yeah. How the fuck do you not like Steve Gutenberg? What an asshole. Yeah. God damn it. All Let's, these, all these, these guys fucking are tight. Gonna, This guy can't even get his shirt let off. Let me pop, pop my shirt off. Yeah. That was a weird cut. Like, there's so many cuts from the same angle. It's, like, so weird. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of that. Ass. There's yeah. one where they're running away from the car. Yeah. And it's like... Oh, fucking It looks face. like it's, there's the same footage, but they just... Just cut, cut it. For no yeah. reason. Yeah, it's so weird. That part, I thought he was going to make him blow him. I thought I so, I was too. like, oh, God. <laughs> that gun is, uh... That's from it's like a, it's it? like a paintball yeah. gun. <laughs> that's from Halo. <laughs> so he is a time traveler. Yes. And now he's going to shoot his ding dong. But he's, like, rubbing the barrel of the gun against his dick. It's weird. And it looks like it would be a semi-automatic gun, but it fires like a shotgun. Yeah. yeah. So, this is, like... The perfect encapsulation of this movie. So this guy has just been like roughed up in the desert, had the shit kicked out of him, his car's been shot up, he's been abandoned in the desert, and he just happens to come across a used car lot with a horny hot chick proprietor that just wants to fuck him for yep. a car. In the yeah. middle of the desert. In the middle, in the middle of the desert. Literally the first thing she does is pop her shirt open. He yeah. doesn't even say anything. He walks up and she's, she's like, what's like up? she's like, what's fuck? Hey, I hope you're here to check out my titties and have sex with me. And she Whoa. just takes her shirt off. It's amazing. Which, in in once fairness again, to her, he is there for that. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, he's, he's always, always there. For that. Look, yeah. there she is. She's like, I, I know I'm like, gonna fuck this guy. So does she fuck everyone who buys a car? Badass. Well, I mean, in her defense, like he doesn't even her buy a car. car he just gives her some dick. I think the car lot is in the middle of the desert. She probably doesn't have that many customers or that much dick in her life. Yeah, he so, says, like, "I need man. the fastest thing on this lot," and she says, "Sugar, I'm the fastest thing on this lot." She is, which is possibly the best line in this movie. And I, I noticed before I had forgotten that he got this car from her, but later on he's driving, and I realized the passenger side, the front of the car, is all jacked up. And I was like, why is he driving this shitbox car? But the, there you go. Oh, and now we have the worst fucking <laughs> shot ever captured on film. Oh, yeah. Hey, look at this. Hey, what is she doing? I mean, like, she's obviously standing there with her tits out, which is the most important. The point of the scene. Yeah. 
but her technique on the massage is well. Not great. not only does she not know how to give a massage, she has clearly never even seen a massage. <laughs> Some of that, she's yeah. just kind of rubbing her hands on him. She's not try- She's not even doing anything. It's just run- running your hands over. So oh, this this is the guy that looks like Alec Baldwin playing Donald Trump playing a character. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He comes back later in the movie at a, some kind of dinner party. I love fucking Shane so, like lifting weights while he's on the phone. <laughs> he's like, I don't know if him. you noticed, but I did one thousand. And Dude, then he that's... calls him back in five seconds. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, if you want to look that jack. That's what you got to do. Yeah. You yeah. Uh, honestly, we're all you Anytime know listeners you can find it. Yeah. The listeners can't see it, but we're all sitting here. Uh, we're doing, pumping doing curls. Right oh, yeah, I'm yeah. bad. Yeah. I'm Aaron's straight. actually yeah. doing uh, burpees right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like as opposed to just burping, which is what he normally does. The way yeah. people usually describe me is shredded. So. Shredded like cheese, bro. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> is that good? I uh, sure. <laughs> Cheese is delicious. It is really, <laughs> really tasty. To hell with you, Shane. So, yeah, um, I, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like there's some, like, you know, there's there's some mildly attractive people in this movie. I, I mean, in an '80s way, yeah, like yeah. they're it, very like 1985 attractive. Oh yeah, there there we go with the. Oh, he says the f word. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, but he also he never... calls him the f word and he fucks him. So it just proves that anybody uses that f word is it's because they're fucking dudes. So is this this guy who who set up we fo- we find out later has had sex with her husband who likes to dress up as a lady uh, and who is the hottest woman in is, this movie? Is this guy actually bisexual? Or is he so oh, hardcore into what he does that he's like, yeah, I had to fucking do it the other day. It's what you do sometimes. Both. No, I, I, no, like I mean, utility. I, yeah. I, think, I think he's an opportunist. I think he's trying to like fuck over people to get money. Yeah, no, he fucks for profit. Yeah, yeah. Purely. I don't <laughs> he think, fucks for profit. Yeah, I don't think well, he like, has a sexuality. I think his sexuality is like... It's money. money. Actually, yeah. that's believable because like... When he's having sex, he he stops after he gets the foot. You're right. He yeah. doesn't yeah. even go for yeah. the really climax. He doesn't come. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Actually, are we now realizing that the writing is really good? No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I had me for a second. We, but we are definitely attributing uh, characteristics. To the bad guy. Oh, yeah. We are definitely writing a plot that probably was not intended. We could probably... We're writing a better plot. <laughs> yes. Between <laughs> us, we could write a movie that is 100% based on this movie, but what we would come up with would be unrecognizable. And yeah. amazing. Because it would make sense. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> See, it's another scene where he's talking to his tape recorder telling us exactly what we just he's saw. He's like, I'm driving behind this car. I turned my lights on. And now, I turned on my blinker, and now I'm turning into the club. Like, maybe this was influenced by Blade Runner, but just, like, the terrible theatrical cut of Blade Runner with the fucking narration. Yeah, I think that Ryan was right in that the narration was added later because the movie didn't make any sense. Like, yeah, I don't know just, that's true. Like, no. I don't know that's true, but it seems yeah. right. It really is just a string of scenes. Because most of the time there's narration he's not holding the recorder. Like, it's just, like, playing over. What but they did shoot the stuff with the recorder. Somewhere. Although, what he's saying visually does not match up with it the audio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he comes into these movies with a very loose plan and then has to figure out how to tie it all together. Yeah, I definitely feel like, like earlier I said, hey, Palm Springs is over there. We're going to shoot there today. Yeah. I think that's, that's possibly as much planning as there is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, most, feel like, I feel like, you know, like we got like, a camera crew. We rented a fucking uh, DeLorean and yeah. we're going to be in Palm Springs. Yeah. yeah. I think you also titties. Yeah, I think he's like he's like this scene. I want hot tub titties and a DeLorean, and they're like, all right, cool. And what should we say? Also, yeah, okay. like the guy we we uh, referenced this earlier, but the guy who plays Stewart uh, also plays a cross dresser uh, in uh, yeah. Malibu she works Express. At no, this is Malibu Hawaii. Express. God damn it! Sorry. <laughs> and uh, I think she works at Edie's. She's like yes. a double agent. Hashtag and is- por- hashtag horseshoe ring. Yep. And is amazing. Yeah. Look at those legs. Yes, yeah, she is gorgeous. 
Like the, the only criticism gorgeous. is poor tech job. The, like other yeah. Than that, I will. I will uh, give Cody Abilene credit. You know, he's like he doesn't say anything offensive. Shane does. No, he's just yeah. straight up like, man, this yeah. guy's a gorgeous woman. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Gotta give him credit there. Yeah, she was definitely cast because she's an amazing drag queen. Uh, this thing's weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that, it, it, it's like a. An ostrich and a raven are fucking his head. There are going to be like three people who understand this reference, but it looks like uh, Awesome Kong's manager from TNA. Yeah. Who was that? Cheerleader Melissa? Is that who that was? Who played that part? Yes. I want to say. Look at that shirt. That's showing more tits than the last Yeah, I thought this was a rich people party, and there's a woman who's almost topless and a woman who's This is how rich people party. You're lucky there aren't naked people being sat on. (laughs) I, I feel like... That's in the other room. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, if That's we, they if were, the we were rich, we would understand this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, eyes wide shut is actually what, like, every rich person's day is just like. She's got gloves that are covering up, like, all of her arms, but her tits are out. <laughs> Maybe her arms are cold, Ryan. <laughs> she is cold because you can see her nipples. Yes. <laughs> her neck and her arms <laughs> are freezing cold, but the rest of her is sweltering hot. You Gotta insulate right. the neck and the arms. I feel like this rich lady should have a nicer wheelchair. Yeah. Well, yeah. no, it's only temporary. Like, she should have, like, a Professor Xavier, like, hover chair. Yes. Oh, man, that'd be sweet. It'd be awesome. And then at some point, there could be a big chase with... scene where Cody would be like, sorry, ma'am, I need this, and throw her out Shove of her out of it. Like, Cody gets yes. in the hover chair. And, like, <laughs> they, they think Cody gets over water and it doesn't work over water? Yeah, and hover chairs don't work on water, <laughs> dumbass. So, who, who are these guys harassing the maid? Just guys? Uh, just nobody? standard issue harassers. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look at them. She says, just because you guys work for Jonathan doesn't mean you can put your creepy hands on me. Who's Jonathan? He's the low rent Le- uh, Leland Palmer. Yeah. Oh, okay. Dude, there's so many characters in this movie. There really are. Who is really this woman yeah. with the glasses? No, just a woman with really dark, weird glasses. That's not the secret agent lady? No. No, the secret agent lady is the one with her tits out. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, you're right. The <laughs> secret agent lady had that same those same glasses, though, right? She She's did. a blonde. Yeah, those are the same glasses. I mean, they only have so much of, like, for the glasses uh, budget. <laughs> One well, only so much for the lingerie budget, too, because yeah. they swap things up. Yeah, it's weird. He's, like, trying to get Stuart to pay for his gambling debts, I think. That, I believe, is the whole, like... So, the guy that was getting the shitty massage... I've put a little bit of this together. The guy that was getting the shitty massage... Uh, is his bookie, and he owes that dude thirty thousand yeah. dollars. So the reason why he has been fucking everyone trying is blackmail them. because he's trying to get them to give him thirty grand so he can get out of debt with uh, Alec Baldwin, Donald Trump. Yeah. Yes, you're a genius. Thank you. So That's the, the part that I've gotten together. As we all know, the easiest way to get thirty thousand dollars is to trick people into fucking you and take a picture of it. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah. That's, well, that's usually how I get $30,000. I'd like to hear it if you do. Yeah. That's how I roll. <laughs> I don't even remember this part. This is yeah. where, oh, it's when he this cut is him. where he possibly actually cut him. I, I think you're right. <laughs> it does look pretty real. Yeah. And none of the other blood in this movie looks remotely real. Yeah, he may have actually... <laughs> Get him on tonight. the face. Like, I don't know what to do. Dick tonight, Shame tonight. Shame <laughs> pants. We'll have some dick tonight, tonight. So he is dick he's tonight, actually, shame pants. <laughs> he is really upset because he just got cut, and he's like, "My good looks." Yeah. Yeah. And like, then he completely fails to dab the blood away. <laughs> well, like in his defense, like we've established, his only marketable talent is fucking people. That's yeah. true. And driving. He's a good driver. He is a good driver. They say he's a good driver. 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 They say he is, but we don't... Well, he he does drive Stuart to the club. He doesn't kill anyone anyone in the car. I guess that makes him a good driver. To the best of my knowledge, he's a great driver. (laughs) And now they're joking about the maid being raped by two homosexuals because they're really good people. And one did her hair while they raped her. Yes. 
The, uh, the, sh- uh, the uh, joke doesn't make any sense. No, it's, no. it's a bad joke. In 1985, it was not a good joke. Yeah. So it's misogynistic and homophobic. Was Cody's so it's mustache? Yeah, it's, right it's, it's like the word... And it, it's it not looks funny. fake. Um, yeah, it's the worst joke. It makes me love. But yeah, I do think that Cody had a stick-on mustache in that scene. <laughs> oh, I hate to think that that actor... Like, at any point, doesn't have a mustache. Oh, yeah, that's bullshit. <laughs> if he ever shaves it off, that's he's made a mistake. Yeah, they got Can we mistake. find any pictures of, uh, what's his name, Ricky Del Fuego? <laughs> it's definitely. Uh, Ricky Del Fuego. Oh, and this it's is like uh, Regis Dingus Del- Leroy or something? Okay, so yeah, this apparently is actually Regis and Darby Roy Hinton. Filming, uh, the, filming something for this movie for some reason. Because they're credited in the movie. They knew it would be a hit. So, did the director or producer of this movie have something over Regis? <laughs> well, he, Is he, there some more he, blackmail? Is this like Andy Sedaris had pictures of Regis and Joy having sex with him. Ah. So, he, he told them, you got to do something for this he, movie. He writes what he knows. Yes. Now it all makes sense. I feel like he, he does have a mustache, most of always. Always. Okay. Like he always has a mustache. That makes yeah. me feel a lot better. Yeah, yeah. Everything I can find of him. Stab! You need to know that somewhere in this world his mustache goes on. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, my mustache will live on. It's a Celine Dion song. <laughs> that was a hell of a stabbing. It was a real vigorous stabbing. And out of nowhere. Like, we knew something was up, but I don't think anybody could have expected, like, just stab. And then she shoots him. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, I don't want to give anything away. This person shoots him. Oh, yeah, we would not want to ruin the movie for it all could the listeners. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah, Darby Hinton, 63 years old, and still looks pretty good. He's still alive? Yeah. All right. And this oh, is a man, look part. at that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Where's okay. Malibu yeah. Express Part 2? I would want the 63 year old Darby Hinton. Shane yeah. is shot mm-hmm. and stabbed and carries, and carries the, the TV outside. TV outside. <laughs> And then we cut. I think that's a great cut because he flies out the door and then it cuts to him like swimming. Like, but like, so that happened. You're not at night. wrong. It is. It accomplishes what Andy Sedaris wanted to accomplish, yeah. but I don't understand why. Why? Oh, I don't either. Because like <laughs> that should be the tagline of the movie. I don't understand <laughs> why. Are they partying why? There's a body there. <laughs> yeah. They're just like drinking mimosas. It's it, the next day, and then he just looks okay, over at so Shane's dead body. So he does mm-hmm. see the body. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They are aware of the body in a minute here when they start making out. Yeah, but they don't really care. No, they are so unperturbed by the fact that there's a dead guy in the lawn. In their defense, it's Shane. Well, Shane, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Save those. Words for the funeral service, buddy. <laughs> and so now they're going to make out for a few minutes before they do anything else with this dead guy well, at their feet. not going anywhere. He's but still he going to be dead. Dead. He's, He's dead. not going to get dead or <laughs> Like, she could be the killer, for all he knows. Like, you don't have that's to why you gotta, she actually That's is. why you got to hit that shit yeah. now. She yeah. may be in jail tomorrow. That's true. Yeah. That's true. You, you don't, you're not going to call the police. Like in fucking Cody Abilene, you're actually gonna call the sex line operator. Yeah, and God, right. Call the police for you. Yeah. Like I still don't yeah, understand yeah. how that works. I don't even, Again, why? You dial nine one one and you get a sex operator. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're Cody Abilene, you do. Yeah. And I hey, what's rat- going on in his room? Oh, nothing. I was just That's rifling through the blood here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I saw blood and decided to rifle through things. And that is a Designing Women sweater. It is. Uh, very much so. She looks like Julia from Designing Women. Yeah, she does. A lot. She's scratching her under tit. <laughs> Wait, does she look... <laughs> Wait, Julia... Or no, the, whatever the, the brown haired one, one. She looks like the one who's still acting, who's ended up being, like, incredible. She uh, was on Legion and... Uh, what else is she? She's been on a few shows where she just looks like a badass. The blonde woman from Designing Women, whatever she was. Yeah, I'm, I've got to look her up now because I can't remember her name. Yeah, I think Sedaris had a thing for the Maid Marian chick. Actually, I feel like she was in Hard Ticket to Hawaii, too. Very Probably. possibly. I'm gonna, I'm gonna her wig is extremely distracting. Yeah. 
Okay. And unnecessary. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean. How much did that cost him? I, it's, we it's we could have gotten another hour with DeLorean. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and like, what was the, what does her actual hair look like that we had to go with that wig? And I guess that's... Gene Smart. Yes, thank you. That one. Who's her character's name in that? Uh, Charlene Frazier, which I never would have come up with. Was she, she no. was in, uh, fucking Watchmen? Yeah. Yeah, she, yeah, she was in yeah. Watchmen. And She's actually really done a lot. Good Watchmen. All right, so this scene, and, and I will say, like, none of this movie makes sense, but this scene right here, all of these sex line scenes, I do not well, understand. Why would you have to wear a sexy costume to be a sex phone operator? I, I don't know. And are they 911 operators who are also sex operators? Look, I go to work and I wear khakis and oh, a polo shirt. Shit. Yeah. And it makes me feel like I'm here to do a job and yeah. be professional. Yeah. You know I don't wear my regular clothes to work. Tom, yeah. made so so if I was going to work yeah. for yeah. a sex hotline, I'd need to put on your collar. I'd, 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 yeah. 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 You put on your leather <laughs> daddy hat and your yeah. collar. The actress she Just played, like Rob Howard. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah, you gotta be professional. The actress she played Maid Marian was actually uh, <laughs> Governor uh, Mel Brooks's uh, secretary in uh, Blazing Saddles. Oh no, shit! Yeah, the one who just like sits around like in her underwear. Yeah. Okay, I can see that. that makes Sorry sense. to the listeners. The kitten is sitting next to the recorder, licking you, herself. You might have just <laughs> heard a cat bottle being cleaned. Yeah, it's true. That's just a little bonus. That was, for that was popular to kitten. Today. That was Newt. Newt's butthole. <laughs> true. She got loose. <laughs> The nude is loose. Put that butthole away. <laughs> and then, yeah, like, Cody Avalon's like, I'm going to withhold evidence from the police. And put... he His speed loader under a blanket. holster does not match his gun holster, which no. drives me crazy. Yeah. But his way of hiding it from the police is by putting it under a blanket. Well, it's a obvious. Everybody in this movie yeah. is pretty fucking dumb. And yeah. I can't imagine the police are any better off. This guy's dressed like some like gumshoe. Right? Wait, did, is he? He's dressed like Columbo. Did he get dispatched from 1927? <laughs> <laughs> this movie really is about time travel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Look here, Cody Adelaide. We don't have time for your games. We've this, got a crime to solve. I do think this movie has this like amazing quality of like. It's impossible to tell if they were if they thought they were being funny or if it's like serious. I I, I believe, having watched a number of Andy Sedaris films, yeah, he knows. Yeah, Something. he does not think he's making high art. He would never say like, "Oh no, you just don't get it." Yeah, like he he yeah. knows what he's doing, yeah. which is sure. which is one of the things that does make these more endearing than they I have agree. any right to be. I agree. Like they're not. Uh, they're not aspiring. Yeah, to like be this is what we call stuff. hard evidence. Right, is what the right. cop just said. <laughs> well, and, yeah. and Cody being a bad well, shot, like yeah, that's it's silly. It's yeah. him just having fun with what he's doing. Well, you know, God bless I mean, his heart. Everyone that like has worked with him, all the interviews, like they say that he was like a great person to work with. He I mean, shit, just, when we yeah. talked about Bagwell, he had pretty. Pretty positive yeah. things to say about working on these movies. Yeah. Uh, he just at this scene, what the fuck is this? Because dirt. we never see this again. <laughs> yeah. They are sitting on the couch in, in the, the middle of blackness. No, that's that's the room with the Star Trek door. Yeah, that's the Russian place. Why is it so black? Because they're rich. Because they can't afford it. Yeah, because they're rich, obviously. Yeah, they, I mean, they just like I guess they just hung like black curtains behind it because they. If I was so rich, I would definitely have a room that was just a void, just black, black and a Star yeah. Trek door. Yeah, I probably wouldn't have a brown leather sofa in the middle of it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, you don't, you don't want to go too matchy matchy and have a black sofa in your black void. I totally would. Because <laughs> then you'll be don't able to find your couch. Design room forty-seven in my mansion. <laughs> you like good luck finding your couch. This is my where's the couch room. <laughs> and so then they go. Okay, wait. Watch the back wall for the two women in the painting 
facing each other. Because they never showed it again the first time when I saw it. And I hope we didn't already miss it again. But hey, we, I think, I think we did. Damn it. Yeah. Damn well, it. then we'll just have to enjoy the painting of the woman. No, there it is. There it is. Oh, yeah. That's a yeah. little weird. That's She's a, licking her forehead. No, that's, another, that's a guy. He's got a mustache. Is it? Yeah, it's the guy. Is it Daryl Hall? No. And yes. John Oates. John Oates. It's, Hall. it's Daryl Hall and John Oates. <laughs> it's Daryl Hall. Yeah, well, okay. this woman masturbating <laughs> up here is Picasso, obviously. And they're... It's, it, the the bang title of that painting is Man yes. Eater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they go to... I'm glad we solved that mystery. They go to where they believe uh, some crimes have taken place to investigate it and immediately begin to bang. Well, you know, let's investigate my dear. Yeah. <laughs> and now he's going to give her he's his best give shot. His be- he, he's lively country music. <laughs> oh right! This is I'm the banjo. Oh this my is, god! This is the the sex scene with the Frontierland music playing yes. on top of it. Totally. This right. is a sultry sex scene. He is sucking on her nipple right now. And it's country and bear it's country jamboree. Bear jamboree right now. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's yeah. the Take most weird shit ever. Where I'm wrong. Well, it's not that, though. I mean, it's straight up, like, banjo yeah. party in the, the country. Yeah. Music. It's like... Right, right. And, and they're just, like, sensually that fucking. Was, that was really good. That's, <laughs> you, yeah. that's exactly what I didn't know was. I could play the mouth banjo that good. <laughs> <It's> solid. <laughs> And that's, I, I'm glad it turns out he's looking for something there. Because yeah, because I was he, uncomfortable with him caressing, caressing the bed. The bed it's like, is the bed, bed next? <laughs> Alright, baby, you gotta leave. I need to fuck this, well, this bed. Is, and this he's is fucked all the way and he's gonna start fucking furniture. <laughs> this is a least showing that it's like, he's like, yeah, me, like Cody Abilene and Batman are the best detectives. You know, like he's like on that level, right? Right. Dick Tracy, no. Cody, Cody well, yeah, Abilene's yeah. better because he goes down. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, oh, he he actually is fucking her for investigative purposes because he's like, I have to recreate his, Shane's his, fucking his to dedication. be able to find the clue. Right. Dedication yeah. to his he's crap. a he's yes. a method detective. <laughs> yeah. He didn't, yes. want, he didn't want a bang. Just had to. No, he had to for the job. Kind of like Shane. For justice. He was fucking for justice and Shane fucks for profit. Shane only yeah, fucks for true. evil. Yes. Yes, Cody fucks for good, Shane fucks for evil. We <laughs> have figured it out. For yachts. Uh, he fucks on yachts. Yes. A, a lot. A yacht. And when he runs out of women, he'll fuck yachts. Yes, in beds and whatever furniture's laying around. Wow, that yacht's looking really sexy today. <laughs> <laughs> down, down, down. Do, 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 do. We get like the banjo version of Careless Whisper. Is that a thing? Ew. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I, remember. I this bet. Uh, what's that? What's that one bluegrass band that does all the covers? Oh, uh, yeah, I know who you're fucking talking about. I can't remember what I they're know called. Fade to bluegrass. They probably did that. Up, yeah. Fade to bluegrass. Yep. It's really good. That is something. They, these are the guys with the fucking like laser, laser guns. Yeah. Yeah, these are not the real guns. guns. These are laser tags. Yeah, guns. these look like the laser rifles from the G.I. Joe cartoon. Yeah. But or, less, or snow jobs rifles. Less realistic. Those are fucking paintball guns. These are less realistic than the G.I. Joe cartoon. <laughs> No, I really do think those might be laser tag guns. Yeah, I, the 80s. I think that I, they are. I can confirm that they're not. But I think they might be pellet guns of some kind. Okay, this was disappointing to me because I got a still shot of this right here to promote that we were recording this today. And I thought he was wearing some kind of insane underwear because his belt, the way his belt goes down, it yeah. looks like he's got some kind of crazy thong on. And then to find out it's just pants. But I think I'll post that shit on Instagram because they'll fucking take it down. <laughs> really, that's exactly where I put it. I don't think Cody Abilene wears underwear. Yeah. No, yeah, no. How no. would you have time to wear underwear if you were Cody Abilene? No, we're just having another spot. Yeah. He yeah. can't even bu- buckle his belt. No, that takes got to be free. You can't constrain that penis. Yeah. yeah. It's it's crazy. Uh, like, uh, like, like, yeah, not be Cody Abilene. 
And he keeps like mansplaining like how to shoot somebody too. He's like, "Stay, I got him." And that's like, part of the humor, baby. Uh, get out! Oh, jeez, Cody Abilene, uh, you useless piece of shit. Look at she gets him twice. But boom, like, boom. it also shows, you know, fucking, uh, you know, he was ahead of the times. It's like the that's, woman's that's handling all the problems. Yeah, the woman's handling it. Yeah, Andy Sedaris in his own odd way. Yeah, he's is is an. A, a, Sort of a feminist. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, all the dudes are dumb as shit. Yes. Yeah. My favorite, like, thing that's ever happened in an Andy Sedaris movie is in Hard Ticket to Hawaii, or is the like, I have to think, let's get in the hot tub. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that's yeah. the only that's way you get your brains planning. to work, is yeah. in a hot tub. When, you got to take your, your shirt off and get in a hot tub. Out. Clearly. You know, every, like, female doctor, scientist... Um, you know, whatever will tell That's you. That's the scientific method. Yeah. Mary Curie didn't do her work sitting at a desk. No, she took her top off, got those titties swinging, and jumped in a hot tub. That's right. There we go. That's just Creative something. juices flowing. Something. Ruth Bader Ginsburg yep. never even showed up. No, she actually she had a hot all tub. all of her judging from <laughs> a hot but tub. Behind hot the tub? bench, she yeah. had her, a hot tub. That's right. saggy 90-year-old titties. That's right. Yeah. Just floating on top of the water. <laughs> God, so I got another bet. Is this your first Sedaris movie? I think it is. Oh wow! You you really need to watch Hard Ticket to Hawaii. Is yeah. genuinely yeah, enjoyable. It's, it's, yeah, it's insane. It's better. The best it yeah. makes some sense, although the snake never really makes much sense. Oh god, it's rednecks again. Oh fuck! Yeah, we could cut all of this. Everything with them in it could just be cut. It's, it's, it's bad. It's the worst part it's of it. So and and you know what? If they did cut this out, all of this stuff, uh, it, it really would. It would. Be, it would. I would put this much closer to hard ticket to yeah. quality than I currently. This do. is dumb. Like this doesn't fit. Well, I do think that this is all him trying to do that Burt Reynolds thing. Um, yeah, I, I think it kind of lends credence to that theory. Poisonally. I do love that the one, the bad guy's name is Bobo Buffington. This is the dumbest fucking name I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. So I get it, but I feel like we've established that he's a guy with a yacht. So is he so a guy is he with a, a yacht? Too? Or yeah. is he a racer guy? I agree. Like, you pick an identity. Stuff. Yeah. Well, Cody Abilene is everything. He's yacht guy, he's pool boy, he's race car guy, he's cop guy. Also, how the fuck does he have a yacht if he's a P.I.? Well, it's his daddy's it's his yacht. Dad. It's his oh, yes. Which is another thing I don't understand is he talks about this his father constantly we never meet his father. Fucking shit with the train door. I know. <laughs> <That's> so weird. <laughs> his I, mom was hit by a train. He was like, my mom was terrified of boats and planes, but she loved trains and she was killed when she was run down by one. A no, a passenger train jumped to the tracks. I think. Yeah. Was yeah. she on it or was she hit by it? I think she was hit by it. Oh, I but think she was. I, I, I took it as she was just like tracks. near it, and then it jumped off the tracks and smushed her. So then, oh. so to memorialize his mom, he builds weirder. a fucking train yeah. wall look at, in front look of at his Cody yacht. Abilene, like acting surprised that there's two chicks waiting to fuck him. Yeah, yeah, that's the best acting in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> there's no way he was surprised. By that, May and Faye, or whatever their names are. I mean, who cares, really? Suspenseful naked electronic chi- music. Naked chick one and naked chick <laughs> yeah. two. I'm the operator they, with my pocket calculator. They again, le- like, lend really nothing to the story other than just some tits, which right. is the whole movie, pretty much. I mean, I mean, know, it's fine. There's some gunshots, some tits, some fast cars, more tits. A lot more tits. Lots, so many more. This, we should have kept a tit count. Um, I actually feel... I can't count that high. Yeah, I, I feel really upset with myself that we oh, didn't Oh, I missed this part count. before. Yeah, you I, I feel like I wouldn't have been able to count that high, not for that many tits, but for how stupid I became by the end of this movie. <laughs> I, right. I it's, saw 153 boobs. It's, it's not... That you wouldn't be able to keep up. It's that your brain stops functioning to a yes. point where... And the, um... Uh, what's that word when you can't remember things? Amnesia. I amnesia. <laughs> I don't remember. The amnesia. Did that just happen? <laughs> uh, yeah. 
<laughs> I'm telling you, it's this movie. Also, I love how, like, so, Cody Ablin just shot this dude in the ear. He's running out to chase after him. The dude is constantly screaming and belly aching. He can't be hard to find. Cody Abilene can't seem to find it. Well, I think we've established there is one thing that Cody Abilene is skilled at. <laughs> yeah. And it is not, it is not being, being a private detective. Dudes. Yeah. He is not the best detective in the world. He is good at getting women to take their tops off. I mean, he doesn't even... Get them to them. He doesn't ask. They them. just no, do. They just, no, yeah. they just do. And then they're just like, please, please fuck us. Take me now. Yeah. It's I need it. Like, oh, God, ladies. All right. I'm going home. I'm going to fucking shave this beard off into a mustache. <laughs> I'm not actually. Be, I think you should. I think that'd be badass. I support that move. That would be excessive. The problem is, is I just I, I'm lazy and I don't like shaving. That's the entire reason to have a beard. To begin with. Yeah, mustache requires a lot of maintenance. Yeah, right. they mustache got time for that. He almost shoot his. He shot his. He almost shot his phone. Probably. I mean, I feel like I saw something recently where somebody shot something really stupid because they woke up. Somebody shot a a fish. What movie did we watch? Oh, man. This is good audio, believe me. <laughs> anyway, if, it, Listen, comes, if it comes to me, if it comes to me, I'll revisit it. If it doesn't, I won't. It was a, it was a movie that was basically like a rip-off oh, of John Wick. Oh, the, the, the fuck girls are back. And are the fuck girls not at all shaken up by the fact that they were getting shot at just a few hours no, ago? They're bringing them no, coffee and no because off. just like yeah. us, us, they've forgotten what just happened. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Uh, it was. Why is he so shaken? Who's the guy who played Hannibal? Um, the TV show. Mads oh, uh, Mads Mikkelsen. He was yeah. in a movie where he is the a hitman? retiring uh, hitman. Yeah. And he buys a dog. And falls asleep and has his horrible nightmares from the time when he was a hitman and wakes up and shoots his dog. Oh, I don't want to see that movie then. It's a really good movie. Well, it's not really. It's a good movie. If if you're like, man, I just don't know what to watch and I need something to occupy the next hour and a half, like it's it's worth it. But uh, and then I think the same thing happens with a fish. He buys a fish and and shoots the aquarium (laughs) too. So he decides he can't have any pets. Or maybe just not have a gun. Well, he needs a hit. He's there. And he does need the gun he later. I don't want to. I don't want to spoil anything about this movie, but he does need that gun later on. Gosh, now I'm thinking about the end of the movie, and it is pretty fucking badass. So never mind. It's good. You need to watch it. I need to see that. What's it called? Is that? Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. It's like. Yeah. Is that like fucking? It's someone ice related. Like it, yeah, it's like snow or snow snowfall or glaciers. <laughs> cold people. Cold man. <laughs> Ski boat. Yeah. Ski man. Ski boat extraordinaire. <laughs> Fridger. Fridger. <laughs> Freezy times. Yeah. Now he has two women trying to fuck him in person and one woman over the phone the trying phone, to fuck him. Who yeah. wishes he could come through the phone. Oh, wait, no. Oh, another was, one. That's no, the fourth one, one that's trying to fuck him at the same time. I don't think the race car lady... Well, no, she later she, wants she to does, fuck him. She tries that's to right. fuck him. Yeah. In yeah. the beginning yeah. and in the end. Yeah, Knockers wants him. Yeah. It's true. With Knockers me. is the star of this movie. She's the hottest one. She's super opinion. adorable. Yeah. Arctic. Arctic? Arctic. Arctic. <laughs> Arctic. I didn't know if it was like a new superhero that shot electricity out of his dick. Arctic. Arctic. <laughs> <laughs> we were close. Indiana Jones. We were close. We, we said it was Arctic. something cold. Arctic. <laughs> yeah, I knew it was something cold really. Yeah, yeah. It Something wasn't Fridgeman. Uh, he's got, he's couple, got a couple, couple of things, things to take care of, and he's talking about titties. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With, with, in my opinion, perfectly acceptably proportioned nipples. Yes. Yeah, I mean, Joe. Fridgeman. I think it was that one scene. They just the camera angle made them look particularly I small. Don't know. Like you got to use the right camera angle when you're looking at your nipples. Use the fish eye. I like, <laughs> my opinion on tits are like all of them are great. Any pair I see, yeah. I'm, yeah. Like, I'm like Ringo and the Beatles. I'm just happy to be here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not talking shit about her tits. I was just like, yeah. 
Her nipples were way smaller than the other girl's nipples. Look, if someone is going to be nice enough to show you their boobs, you could at least well, appreciate yeah. it. Well, yeah, and I will say thank you. Thank you, <laughs> and, and lady with the small nipples. I, thank I've you. never been you sad are a star. by, like, any tits I've ever experienced in person. But I will say, like, I have been sad, like... Feel like some women do not have butts, and that is makes me sad. Yeah, yeah. Like you gotta have some. You gotta bring you know some kind of ass to the. To the that was just one you of those cuts again. Yeah, yeah no, and it was like super weird. You gotta bring a front porch and a back porch. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, and as, as we know, I'm all about the back porch. <laughs> Arian's back porch. <laughs> Arian's anal corner is being renamed Arian's back porch. Yeah, I like it. That makes it sound like we're talking about Arian's back porch, though, and I'd rather oh, not. Yeah. I mean, it's huge. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you know, I'm not gonna. Comp- you know, it's just there. This scene is real fucking weird. They lose him on the highway, and they're like, "It's okay." We'll get him at the next exit. And I'm and like... And they know where he's going. But that's not how, well, like, maybe, roads work maybe, or anything. Maybe he's on the yeah. access road. Yeah. Uh, like Jimmy Carter. Yeah. And June Knockers is bored and upset. Well, so am I. <laughs> <laughs> In her defense, this movie is insane. So, She's a working acquaintance. June's like, you fucking working with her? You better get working on me. Fuck boy. <laughs> and, and June is kind of a bitch. She's like, who's that old bag? And well, he's like, oh, she's a work acquaintance. And I'd be like, I'm a what? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm still, is way cuter. I'm yeah. still sad that we don't get to see Rodney. Rodney, which is yeah. really, really strange. Good. I've never met a girl named Rodney before. I mean, maybe her last name is Rodney and it's just a case of you. So I went back here to the, the bathroom and popular kitten sitting on the toilet in a very challenging manner. <laughs> Do I have to fight your cat to go to the bathroom? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good luck. You want to say good luck? We're all counting on you. Excuse me. <laughs> Dude, you can pick her up and toss her Just out. Just push her down. She like she's there you a go. she's a chill cat, dude. Like, oh yeah. You can handle her. If it was my cat, I would tell you to go outside. And <laughs> that would be the safer yeah. fault. Yeah. It's just like, dude, sorry, we don't have a bathroom here anymore. You're not gonna piss in there. Yeah, Newt is like the sweetest, friendliest cat. She's just yes. like, okay, I'll go over there. She's she seems very chill. Yes. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. As opposed to Nikita the murder cat. <laughs> yeah, Newt. Newt's. I still don't not know what cat. anyone's motive is. In I don't movie. know why these guys are trying to kill I don't Cody Abbott. Okay. I don't know who they are. Technology. Where they came from? Computer knowledge. They work for the Russians. Computer knowledge. Just the Russians. I don't know. I have no idea. Here's that they blow have, up like, you wanted. One, like, like the guy getting the massage should not be. <laughs> if the guy getting the massage was Russian, that would have made it made more sense. No, the guy getting the massage has nothing to I know, do with all this. I know. But he's saying, the boogie yeah, that yeah, he's the reason why Shane. Shane is fucking everyone. But like what the fuck does that have to do with the Russians? I not a like, goddamn thing. I feel like Shane would still be fucking everybody for blackmail just because like that's the kind of dirtbag he is. And just yeah. in case, he's gonna have some protection. Yeah. Uh poor fucking Beverly just got shot. It's Shane. And then he just leaves her. Yeah. Going, well, I'll be okay. I, it's only a giant bullet hole in my yeah, shoulder. That's she's, I'm fine. She's like 38. Take your time. What, a, what an old piece of shit. Yeah, you gotta leave that old bag behind. <laughs> yeah. Well, who's this fucking low rent Lou Ferrigno? That's one of the fucking muscle heads. Yeah. That's... Jesus Christ. What's happening in this movie? <laughs> the coked up guy with no ears is trying to finally take out Cody Abilene. Nobody can take out Cody Abilene. Oh, this is with the grenade, right? Yes. Okay. Also, like, does he have... Is his blood white like he's an alien? Like he's a, uh, an android? No, uh, like, from alien? Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Because, like, when that he sign, up, That sign said hospital. We can't get Beverly into that room? No. Yeah, no, wait. Okay. Why is there a hospital at the at racetrack? At the racetrack. Well, well, maybe I mean, in case somebody gets like, hurt. You do but that we a can't. car accident. Yeah. yeah. But we can't but get Beverly really over there? That wouldn't be yeah. called a hospital, would it? No, it would be no, like first aid. Yeah. I, th- I think there'd be like a pretty decent medical facility It would be an emergency facility. They probably yeah. wouldn't put a hospital sign but over there. But the sign says hospital. It's really weird. I noticed that. That's very bizarre. But 
Somebody well, can't in, come in out the Andy and verse, it all makes sense. Because people are getting shot all the fucking time. They've yeah. got <laughs> more, more hospitals than uh, churches and liquor stores. Yeah. Yeah. Because of all the gunfire. Oh, June knockers. With an H. With yeah. an H, yeah. <laughs> knockers. So this sets it up. He wants to throw the grenade, and he doesn't, so he puts it back on his chest, and then later he just blows up randomly, and it seems random. <laughs> <laughs> Except it's not on his chest, Except, it's on a belt around yeah. his waist. He, he has a belt just let's, for let's holding stop, his two let's grenades. Let's stop trying to make this make sense. But there's also the guy with the converse on his head. But because of the That's amnesia, true, there's a guy with a shield. That, that he yeah. had this grenade with him. So when he blows up, you don't understand what is blown up. I'm gonna, yeah, I thought it was the car. I did like, too. What? I was like, that's Happening. a really weird explosion for a car. I'm going to put together a coffee table book called The Fashion of Andy Sedan. <laughs> Hell yeah. I would buy that. I'm starting a Kickstarter today. Converse hat. Tip blouse. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the... I mean, most every, of it... Every shirt in here is a tip blouse. Yeah. So now he's ta- he's he's yeah, driving... He looks, he looks right at them. Looks yeah. right at them. These guys look right at the guys with the guns and don't do anything. And then they're like... Rah! And they all run away. The, fun, the fucking dude with the musket's hilarious. Yes. <laughs> He's carrying, like, in a fucking Revolutionary War, 43-foot-long musket. Well, I don't know both, how it fits in the helicopter. And both of the muscle guys, like, the way that they carry these rifles is hilarious. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're not gu- gun people. <laughs> no. <laughs> At all. Well, I don't think he ever actually... Either one of them fire their guns, do they? They do. Oh, Later yeah. on when they're chasing him through the desert. Cause when, to, when, when Cody and the chick are falling all over each other the whole time. Yeah. Like to, every to time pour they in move. the gunpowder. <laughs> yeah. To do the yeah. stick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that gun barely fits in the helicopter. It's up against the roof. And you know the I'll stock you, is on the floor. Yes. I'll tell you this. Like, I absolutely... Like, I would, you know... If this is like a real production, I would have shot the scene. But I would not be in the Andy Sedaris movie and get on his helicopter with some old guy flying it. Like, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I'd be like, hell no. Like, there's no way. No? That's not terrible. That's line in this movie? Yeah. yeah. The 80s were <laughs> a simpler time. Definitely seems like you're going to die. Fueled by cocaine. Yeah. Uh, I'm not way more okay. concerned about her crawling across that speed, bar. Listen, speed turns her on. She just said. She's a racer. But, like, sh- why is she, like, trying to fuck him while they're trying to shoot at them? Her name is... D- Her name is June Knockers. <laughs> yeah. And it, my bad, I'm sorry. She's ready to fuck. But she he drives does, does she fuck. want him to titty fuck her? I don't know. Because she took her shirt off, which is completely unnecessary. Yeah. For, for the is fucking party. Right. In the Sedaris movie? Come on. It's very necessary. You, you, those those high waisted jeans got to go. Yeah. And they would be tough to take off in this little tiny race car. Oh my gosh! Yeah, she would need assistance. Yeah. Skin tight, high waisted eighties jeans. Imagine the direction here. I, I need you to to play with your boobs, and also <laughs> sexually assault. Uh, Cody Abilene. Cody yeah. Abilene. I was trying to think of his real name. I can't remember it. <laughs> Dalton Digfer. Dickie, Dickie uh, Ripper. Yeah. Well, her her real name is Carol Juggs. <laughs> Clearly. Yeah, I believe that. I yeah. can't believe this movie has like a fucking hour left. <laughs> it does not have an hour. It I has a lot. Of hour. There's, I really think it does. There's another scene with the stupid redneck people. Yes. There's the scene where he explains everything to everybody. Yeah. There's There's the later five minutes of running from these assholes. There's a lot of this movie. (laughs) There's like 15 minutes left. (laughs) Yeah, but that 15 minutes is going to feel like a lifetime. (laughs) And like we, like I don't want to spoil anything, but at this point we've seen the majority of the tits that we're going to see in this movie. It's all downhill from here. Tits. I don't know what you want. <laughs> don't put your foot on the ottoman. They're going to hear it on the recorder. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
not get it signed. For those that don't know, Ryan's foot talks. Apparently. Uh, <laughs> here, what's up? It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, very here's low. Our, here's our Andy Sedaris uh, cameo. Stanley cameo. Yes. Sedaris uh, does a cameo in all of his movies, as, now, I can't, as he should. I can't imagine that Andy Sedaris has a wife. He does. He does. He does. He did. I saw it really? with and Joe Bob Is that her? No. No, but, but she's like a producer on all of his yeah. movies. Like oh, she's, wow. Andy Sedaris is white. Oh, no, she's a writer? Yeah. She's so, very, very involved I, in these movies. That's kind of awesome. Is yeah. her name Candy Sedaris? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. So I saw an interview with Joe Bob Briggs and Andy Sedaris and his wife. And Andy Sedaris was saying that he writes his scripts in about a weekend. Like, he'll write that a makes whole sense. movie that script long? in a weekend. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> and then she was saying, she was like, then I take all of his, like, random words and then take <laughs> two weeks and, like, him turn it into an actual story. Sort of. Ish. Well, yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Sure. Which, like... I mean, I feel like that's part of the magic. Uh, that man no, just got is. hit in the dick with a car. With a, a race, race car. car. Yeah, and, and then, then he explodes. <laughs> and then he explodes because that's how grenades work. But and did you notice white. that his blood is white? I oh, think yeah. My theory is he was completely comprised of cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you do that? He has a cocaine in his veins instead of blood. <laughs> Such a fucking he was like the yeah. Stay Puft Marshmallow <laughs> Man, except Stay with cocaine, cocaine man. Instead, of, instead of marshmallow. Uh, and here, here, poor June Knockers is running without any sort of running through the desert with just her tits out. Support, and uh, oh my god, out. they're covered, but they're not. But they're supported. not supported, and it would hurt wow. so much. Especially because we've already established. June Knockers is adequately made. <laughs> yes. She is adequately boobed, and they are very natural, and they are f- just they, fly- they so lovely jumping around really like, like crazy. It would be very June uncomfortable. Running without yeah, a bra June pants is going to be unfortunate for me. The actress, you know, God bless her soul, Carol Juggs, you know, she. <laughs> May Tits. <laughs> tits McGee. <laughs> June knockers and May tits. You know the whole point of having guns is so you don't have to chase people. They don't. They don't. You get know, it. like, what are you gonna run? Are you gonna hit them with the gun when you catch them? These guys are. We we established <laughs> primarily bodybuilders. They're meatheads. Yeah. They're, they don't know how to fire a musket. <laughs> they are complicated. I wouldn't either. All right, this is the best. What is happening? <laughs> I thought that was an accident. I, that was I think both of them were like, accidents. Yeah, like they're, not they're even running up the hill. She falls she down. She was hired. She was hired for her tits. Yeah, he I was love hired that. For to be like, where did they go, boy? He says, "Where did they go? They went over a goddamn hill." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> these guys were hired because they're bodybuilders. Like none of them were hired for their acting chops or their stunt work. Yeah, like, not at all. But yeah, he. She falls down and he falls onto her head. And then she's like, get off me, you idiot. <laughs> and, uh, and, and the fact that she fell chest first, unprotected. Oh, God, her poor boobies have yeah. got to be so sore. Like, any lady listeners, if you are even I'm, I'm sure we involved, have plenty, by the <laughs> way. So many lady listeners. If, if you are, you understand that it hurts. And this weird first person POV shot. Yeah. yeah. Just this one POV shot is like It's it's a dirty, dirty hairy thing. shot, yeah. but it's I'm trying to think really is, dirty, weird. is dirty hairy like that? Yeah. Is yeah. the point of view? Yeah. yeah, but okay, so he said two dirty hairy lines. When did we establish that he thinks he's dirty hairy? I thought he was a yacht guy and a race car guy and fuck boy. Well, he's also dirty he's hairy. He's also dirty hairy. Yeah, in, he's the, too in many the shower he says something about, about like you feel lucky. Many on. things. He says some dirty hairy shit. Yeah, yeah. But he did. He did two full lines, but still, like, you know, pick a thing. No, I agree. It's terrible. Yeah. Be a fuck boy. You're no, good at that. I, I think in the eighties you go for it. You go big. Yes. You, you encompass everything you can. If he, uh, if he starts June's skydiving now, front porch now, really yes. fine. Yeah. Yeah. Our ass. Makes sense. I mean, he's not wrong. And he's not great at any of the things that he does. No, I mean, except for the fucking. I well, guess. I don't even. But we said we don't even know if he's really that great at the fucking. I mean, people well, are constantly begging, begging him want to for fuck sex. Him again. Yeah. So yeah, okay, we'll, we'll give him that. He's, he's gonna bang him. He's gonna have a mustache. 
That's about it. He is great at having a mustache. Yeah, yeah. He just called the camper like, that Sedaris pulled up a mobile home. And then, like, in his pants while he's doing these lines. So weird. Yeah. <laughs> he is really, really excited. High on cocaine. Yes. yes. He's like grinding yes. his teeth. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> Well, he he stopped and snorted some of that guy yeah. up off the road. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's true. Sure. Never sleep again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, literally, that man exploded in powder. Yeah, in powder you're, and you're right. All over exploded into a, a shower of cocaine. Yeah. I'd just, just like to point out that I said this point. movie had an hour left about 40 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. This is not that was like six minutes. Dave. It was like it was not six minutes. Long time. Like six I, I minutes, checked yeah. the time when I came back from the bathroom last, and I was like, "Oh my god!" And it's still light out, and I feel like it should be midnight. <laughs> is it Wednesday? It's <laughs> seven, seven thirty. You <laughs> and those were marvelous today. <laughs> nice smack on the ass. Pats are on the butt, of course. No. It was the 80s. It was well, friendly it was smack. Much more. That's the other person he banged. And look at this the fucking doctor. The other person he banged? Yeah, he I banged didn't even, everyone in this movie. I didn't <laughs> even notice this doctor before. <laughs> With the Hulk Hogan? Yeah. Let me tell you something, brother. You got shot. He is 45% mustache. <laughs> I'm going to need you to take some vitamins and say your prayers, and this will be fine. <laughs> yeah, it's a real American. Drink milk if you get a chance. Okay, what the fuck is this scene? Yeah, what? I don't remember. It's that. more rich people fuck. shenanigans. It's just a whole bunch of women in high waisted panties and no shirts <laughs> gyrating for no reason while well, this guy's getting a blowjob. The reason What's is happening? that they're in the Star Trek room and everybody's <laughs> high on cocaine. Yes. Except for those two. She looks so because bored. Because that's the look on your face when you're at a party with a bunch of people high on cocaine. And you're not and on you're cocaine. not. Yes, yeah. exactly. I've had that look. Yes. It's true. <laughs> this is just a very bizarre. They are, that's not a film of them making out. She was just giving him a blowjob. Yeah, no. <laughs> they were definitely having oral. Uh, oh, shit. shit. I mean, that's kind of badass to storm into a Star Trek room and start shooting. <laughs> I know, and with what a bad shot he is, he really shouldn't do that. Well, no, also, he's, Chris he, Pratt. he unlocked his shootingness yeah. because he shot that guy. Yeah. So now he's that a good shot. It. I don't uh, think that's how it works. Chris Pratt stole his look in Jurassic World. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Totally. That's his wardrobe. Yep. 100%. Is. How dare 100%. you bust into my void and start shooting things? Oh, shit. Fucking chill out, Leland Palmer. This is such a weird movie. <laughs> and it's strange because normally schlocky, low budget movies kind of just move. And if you don't get it, you don't get it. This one has so much exposition. There's a scene. And yet it still does not make any sense. So, like, there's a scene, and then there's a a follow up scene to explain the scene before, and then there's another scene, (laughs) and then the next scene is to explain the scene before, and that's how it goes. It's like every other scene is is exposition for the scene that's what happened before. And why does he have to put the stocking over her head? It's the only way to prove it. But she looks exactly the same. And then everyone's like, oh, (laughs) fuck. Oh, well, okay. Good point. Yeah, they're like, oh, I never would have known. Case closed, right? Not so. I made a mistake. Oh, 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 God damn it. (sighs) These fucking terrible people. They really are like... It's like they're out of a John Waters movie, but like they're not charming. Yeah. yeah. God, they're the worst. They, they're just the... Limited. My son here is a mechanical genius. No, he's not. There's no part of him that is a genius. No. Bobo. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> the wrong man exploded. <laughs> it's true. Wrong kid died. <laughs> that guy almost fell out of the back yeah, of the truck. Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of people that almost died in this movie. I think that's And they just left it in. All of Sedaris movies. Yeah. Yeah. He had all sorts of extreme vehicles. He eggs. Yeah. Named actors. Just hire a new one with some cocaine. Yeah. Their lives aren't worth anything. 
Oh, and here's the part where he's like hugely racist to this guy. He's like, if you do this for me, I'll buy you a chimichanga or whatever. Yeah. This is a. Oh, yeah, and then he calls him a beanbag? Ugh. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Is that even a racist term? Like, what the fuck is that? A beanbag? Beanbag. He calls him a beanbag. I, I think. Uh, I, don't even want I to think that's yeah. because racism is such a foreign concept to Andy, Andy Sedaris that he didn't even know. He wanted to portray that these people are terrible, yeah. but he just doesn't even know how to, I think to right. do that. How to yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. Which is good. That, that makes me feel better about liking Andy Sedaris. <laughs> so the, we'll, the guy we'll believe put that. his helmet on backwards. He, he does terrible things, yeah. he just isn't racist. Yeah. We're all white on the inside because we're full of cocaine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and this is there so much cocaine. Yes. My veins are all cocaine. This this scene just drags everything Doesn't to a fucking halt. Yeah, you know what? Happen. This scene it just shows that he's stronger with family. <laughs> <laughs> It, yeah, every. So, so this is where they got the idea for the Fast and Furious oh, yeah. movies. It yes, okay. yeah, definitely sure. inspiration yeah. here. Yeah. What in the fucking shit this is this? This is originally going to be called the Fast and the Cody Avalanche. <laughs> <laughs> I think those are fire extinguishers going off in the back of his car. I, I think so. And too. I think they're taped to yeah. a yeah. beer keg that's been spray painted <laughs> black. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I don't think that whatever that's supposed to be is a thing that exists. No, it's not. Do you, uh, I noticed you've got a truck outside. Do you have uh, an umbrella to put in the back of your truck? Uh, like yes, the yes, Buffingtons yes, do? Yes. <laughs> um, it's actually my work truck, and work does supply me with a beach chair and an umbrella. As they should. Uh, for when I need Thank to uh, carry around a large woman with a bouffant yeah. in the back yeah. of the truck. As, as you often do. Yeah. So it's pretty frequent in my line of work. this means that he, like, won his dad's respect or something? Well, Maybe that's actually. Why does he give him a silver bullet? Maybe why that's is, actually. Why does anything happen in this movie? No, silver bullet isn't that. Well, why does when he shit? needs to call literally anyone, he calls oh, a sex no, 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 no. line operator and has her relay the message? I don't know. He's calling her again, yeah. and every time he calls her, she puts a hat on and takes her tits out. I don't understand yeah. why. I like it though when she puts the NASA on. She's like, "You made my fucking." Shit blast off. And how did she know he was going to call with that? How does she have the appropriate hat ready at every time? Uh, As as much as I like her swimsuit or whatever she's wearing there, I I do wish it was denim. It does look (laughs) denim. You know, we all have a denim swimsuit in the back of our closet somewhere. Seems very practical. Yeah, it wouldn't chafe at all. No, no. Denim, when you get it wet, is really comfortable. Yeah. Now, now, all right, so is, here we are. This is Oh, my gosh, we're yes. down to the last 35 minutes of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. <laughs> this is where he starts remembering shit that he wasn't there for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which That's hilarious true. to me is like, okay, so he has Liza arrested, and now she's out, and she's just happily on his yacht. Yeah. Chilling out. Having and he's shit. like, I'm so smart, I realized that it wasn't you. Like the least believable thing in this movie, and then he's like the person who did it got yeah. away. So I'm so on. good at my job. I know it's, that's literally what he's saying. He's like, he's like, in, in her I, defense, she just killed Shane, and he was a piece of shit. Yeah, I mean Shane definitely. Yeah. The world is better off without Shane in it, but but like he did nothing. He didn't accomplish anything. He so. gained a lot of women. Oh, yeah, yeah, all he did was he fight. He banged everyone women. on that boat. Every yeah. one of that boat's like, oh, yeah. No. Did, he did fucked he... and got the wrong woman arrested. That's all he did. Over the course of this movie, did he stop the Russians from stealing computers? Mm-mm. No. No? Probably not. Did no. he increase America's computer knowledge? <laughs> by no. Five years? Definitely not. <laughs> no. So all he did... He made sure Lisa didn't get arrested for... Which what? she wouldn't but have... But he wouldn't have if... Anyway. Yeah, yeah. if it weren't for him. If it wasn't for him, put the stocking on her face. Because <laughs> the cops, as he said, I knew I needed to figure this out. Because the, the 1927 cop wouldn't like, have. The, the cops did arrest Stewart because he's gay, apparently. Yeah, I don't know why they 
why they would have arrested Stuart at all. They, they found the pictures of yeah. Stuart's wife Shane. with Shane. It, so they assumed uh, it was a jealousy thing. I don't think but, it was a... No, I think they found the pictures of Stuart with Shane. No, I think it was the wife. Because they sent the pictures of the wife to Lady fucking Wheelchair. When they showed it, yeah. 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 So it was because they found... <laughs> <laughs> Lady Wheelchair? <laughs> the fuck is wrong with you? I'm sorry. You're a terrible person. <laughs> I am, I'm sorry. <laughs> lady, lady hop along. <laughs> but I also want to take a point to, to say, uh, he, in his explanation, is like, um, that this chick is so obviously left-handed as she established, <laughs> and then they go and flashback to all these scenes of her using, using her, her left, left hand. hand. Like, we as the audience were supposed to see and notice that. Now, I would like to point out here... Uh, on the little table, if we ever get back to it, amidst the reused footage here. Well, that's not reused, because we did not see... That's not sleeping powder, first of all. That is definitely okay. cocaine. cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, he's so filled with cocaine, it actually has a reverse effect on him. <laughs> yes, yeah, he's, he's taking a cocaine nap. <laughs> so it might look like just a large napkin that's also on the table the next right to him. Also, the right hand that they jimmied the door with. But that napkin is actually yeah, uh, because it wasn't a hyperbaric it was storage uh, cloth <laughs> Yes, that <laughs> prevents oxygen from getting to whatever is underneath it. Because as soon as he takes it off, it melts. <laughs> How does her tits stay in there? Tape? Yeah. Magnets. How do they work? <laughs> miracles. One, two, miracles. Three. So at least three of those women on that boat he banged. He didn't have sex with Liza. Yeah. No, because he remembers Shane having sex with Liza. I think the only person on the boat that he fucked was the detective. The detective. Okay. Oh, well, I thought they meant the like, Columbo he's, guy. He's clearly, <laughs> 27, yeah, yeah. He's clearly going to fuck June Knockers. No, he, he fucked June Knockers. Well, in the beginning they were making out like they have fucked. I, I feel like, you know, like if he hasn't, they're going to. Yeah. I would say the same thing about him and Lady Wheelchair. <laughs> yeah. All right, so this is now... He has now uh, left the oxygen... And it immediately starts to melt. And it and says, as that you too. know, I'm yeah, an artist. Well, who knows that? How, how did we have known that? How did we establish All that? I know was that you're a lady how, that wears how did we dresses catch, with the shits hanging out. How did we not catch the Halloween 3 crossover? <laughs> this is my favorite shower ever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she washes her vagina <laughs> so much. Well, well like, oh, you kind if of you fucked Cody Abelie, you'd yeah. Yeah. You wash her vagina too. <laughs> She's like, let me wash it some more. Never clean out of there. <laughs> Forever unclean. Yeah. <laughs> now this is Sybil dating, right? Yes. Okay. And I'm just glad that she's got a really clean vagina now. Well. Relatively speaking. Well, yeah. In general, that's not what the beach showers are for. <laughs> like, they're to rinse that salt off and that's about it. Like, I mean, she was just getting up in there. You don't get in there yeah. in the beach shower. If you feel that dirty, you do. I guess. Like oh, a bunch of cocaine just shot out of the table. <laughs> <laughs> just fucking cocaine <laughs> shooting out everywhere. everything. Anything that's not nailed down, just cocaine just shooting out of it. <laughs> cocaine was so plentiful in the 80s, it was just everywhere. <laughs> His sweater is actually knitted with cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> made of it. That's why yeah. she's sweating so much. <laughs> All of their clothing is just so okay. They're, they're all wearing all white. white. Yeah, they're all yeah. wearing white. It's weird. Except for the detective. Well, he's got to wear his Columbo fedora. Yeah. And Cody is looking a little rough by the end of this movie. He's got some very dark circles. I think he got dehydrated again. Yeah, exactly. Well, he needs like, a glass of water. Apparently, fucking you fuck your life out of him. <laughs> When your Cody Adeline tires you out. Yeah. <laughs> so let's wrap this thing up. Uh, right? Who's that girl? Those two. We know. Oh. We know, know you're, you're a fan. You he wasn't this movie. there for this. You've watched it at least a dozen times. Now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I'm fucking rules. So the, rules. that's final thoughts. Uh, uh, yeah, Malibu Express fucking rules. Uh, we used the poster as our flyer for Marduk Fest. Three, I think. Uh, I fucking love it. 
Uh, it's no hard ticket to Hawaii, but, uh, you know, I think that it's a good, like, establishment of the uh, Sedaris first and what you can expect from his movies. A fair representation. Yeah. It's true. Arian? Uh, this is, you know, it's fine. Everything's fine. (laughs) (laughs) Nicole, when Ryan chose this, how did you feel? What went through your head? What were your thoughts? I mean, you know, I, I love Sedaris. I think it's really fun. Um... So like I'm never gonna I'm never gonna be upset about watching a Sedaris movie. Sure. Uh, some are better than others, uh, but you know, okay, yes, this movie makes zero fucking sense. Oh yeah, even in the chat, I was like, if yeah. y'all can tell me what this movie's about, I love it. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. What <laughs> I've seen it. Uh, I've seen it at least probably five times, um, and I do not at all know what this movie is about. Um, but there's a lot of titties. It's really fun. Um, it's most fun to do like this to get together with like a group of friends, um, have a few drinks, and watch it. Uh, so like, I, I love it. I think it's great. Um, I will watch it again. You know, we, we like to have like little like Sedaris marathons from time to time. Beth, this is your first Sedaris experience. Yes, How are you feeling now? <laughs> How have we left you? I will let you know when I am capable of rational thought again <laughs> and my memories return to me. Um, that amnesia wears off eventually. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping it does because I do have to work tomorrow and I want to remember how to do my job. It's it's all just going to be one big tit filled blur. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what I'm hoping, actually. That's, <laughs> that I think is going to be the best. That, that was my nickname in high school. <laughs> <laughs> there were enough hot tubs in this movie. Now. That's true. I feel like I've probably seen worse things in my life, but right now, because I'm incapable of thinking, I can't think of what they are. <laughs> I think it's actually better to have seen this first, because part of why I didn't enjoy this more than I did is because in my head, it's always going to be hard to get to Hawaii. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And that is Sedaris's finest rules. work. That movie fucking rolls. And, and also, this, even though this takes place in California, like, it's not as, like, tropical adventure action no. movie yeah. as I kind of had in my head it would be. I mean, granted, it's only called Malibu Express, so I don't know why I would have expected any of that. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's, I was obviously just being harder on it than I really needed to be. It's perfectly yeah. fine. Yeah. I, I, the only thing, when, when I was talking about, not liking it. The only thing I was serious about was cutting all the parts with the redneck people. No, that part sucks. Yeah, that yeah. is really all much the parts should be cut out. It, and if they were, yeah. this movie would be awesome. It yeah. absolutely brings the pace to a grinding halt. It literally every probably, time we see it's those. It's probably people. only like twelve minutes, but it yeah. just slows it down. Feels so, and it's not even yeah. that those parts are necessarily that bad. It's just that they're so unrelated they to anything else. At yeah. all, yeah. They could literally be chopped out in. You, well, one, it would bring the movie down to under 90 minutes. Yeah. Which would be key. Perfect, yeah. Um, and, and it would make all the difference in the world. It would be a lot more fun. It, it would move along a lot more quickly. Also, uh, Cody Evelyn is not as ripped as he is in that picture. Well, that's, you know, that's, yeah. that's what we do. That's take it, take well, a look at the Star Wars movie. poster in Mark Hamill. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, so, before we go, what are you up to online? Where can we find you? What are you doing? Uh, I will be at Dragon Con helping out with the big damn game show. Woo! And that's all I'm promoting right now. Awesome. I'll take it. Aaron, anything? I I don't fucking do things. (laughs) (laughs) You can follow uh, my Instagram at sexualazyman. Uh, I've recently branched out into uh, pictures of my leg. Uh, <laughs> log with claws. Yeah. Yes. Uh, everything's fine. I'll have some gnarly scars. It'll be it'll be fine. Nicole. Uh, you can follow me at Battle Cougar for pictures of Newt the popular kitten, who uh, made her uh, debut today. Very exciting on the commentary. Um, I will also be at the Big Jam Game Show, which I'm very, very excited about. And if you want to buy some candles, uh, Cadaver Candle Co. on Instagram. And Beth, you got some stuff happening. 
Uh, some if stuff. you can remember it after I, that. Yeah. I do things. <clears throat> um, no, I am co-host of Execute Chapter 66, a podcast where we talk about Star Wars books. Tune in soon. We just got an exclusive interview with Timothy Zahn that will be going up next week. Oh, wow. Nice. And I will also be a part of the Big Damn Game Show, as well as a few panels of our own at Dragon Con. There you go. Uh, we will be back next month. I know we picked the movie, but my brain has been so thoroughly abused that I can't remember what it was going to be. What, what are we watching Escape next Escape from month? L.A., I think. Escape from yeah. L.A. Oh, yes. yes. To Which close I'm out our really excited summer. about. That's that going to be a good fun one. Fun as one, fuck. Man. I was maybe exaggerating a little bit about how bad that movie was, but but not too much. Uh, it's it's like I said, cut out the part with the redneck family, and you've got a much better movie there. You guys, please check out the Needless Things podcast Facebook group. Check out the Needless Things YouTube channel with at least two reviews a week. Although next week. I didn't tell you guys about next week in the intro, and I really should have. Next week on the podcast, we are going to have a special Audible interlude review of Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins. And I actually have not decided yet if it's going to be an Audible interlude episode or a Needless Things episode. I'm not too sure. Maybe it'll be both. Maybe I'll release it in both feeds. Does that make sense? I don't know. Uh, and then I will have three different reviews next week on the Needless Things YouTube channel of the Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins G.I. Joe Classified series action figures. Uh, only three of them are out right now. Snake Eyes, Storm Shadow, and Baroness. Uh, and I almost opened them up the other day to review them and realized I really wanted to wait until I see the movie. Uh, which is one of the things I'm busy with during these five days because as brutal as the work schedule is, uh, I really, really want to see this movie. It's going to be our first movie back in the theater. Uh, we're, of course, going to be as safe as we can be, but I'm, I'm excited about that. We're going to record that. That'll be up next week. Uh, follow Phantom Troublemaker on Instagram. Follow Needless Things Podcast on Instagram, and you can message either or both of those with inquiries about anything, including our Dragon Con activities, of which there will be many uh, that we will detail in the coming weeks. Thank you for listening. I love you guys. You have been listening to a Needless Things podcast. You can follow Needless Things on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and at needlessthingspodcast.com. Love you. Mean it. Uh-huh.